split them together if I got her. All right, so quick little thing for the camera. What's up? We got Tom Francis on the show because I'm not going to edit this video. We're just going to dive right into it. So in uh, three, two, one, we're recording, bro. Bro, so nice. We're about to do it twice. How you doing, Dude, man? What's going thanks on? Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Fucking Dude, this is the, it is, it's so funny because like, <laughs> Everybody's like, what's your most, you know, what's your most memorable guest you've had? <laughs> and it's like, I've had some incredibly memorable concerts. For sure. I mean, uh, concerts, uh, guests For on sure. the show, but there's nothing that tops this. There's literally nothing. Like, I've, I've gone to New York City for shows. Sure. I've gone to people's homes for shows. I've seen some pretty cool stuff, but this... For anybody, I, I you know, for my past podcast guests, if you're listening, I really apologize, but this takes a gig. <laughs> this takes a gig. This, this, it's just, it's so, like... You watch YouTube and you see some of these guys online and you're like, you know what? It would be so cool if I had that, right? And you're like, wow, it's really cool, like, either a smoking studio or, like, whatever they got, right? Right. This is, like, this is next level. Like, this, you can't even, you know, when you're a little kid and you dream about, like, what you want to have when you get older, like, this is never the thing that comes across your mind because it's so unique. And you get in, you're like, oh, my God, this is a whole different world. I think so. I think to me that's still, after three years of doing that, I'm addicted to that. Like, I'm addicted to the, the hit of people coming in and go, oh my fucking God, are you yeah. kidding me? And they're like, oh, do you have this bourbon or scotch? I'm like, yeah, I have that bourbon or scotch. Are you fucking kidding me? I, I haven't and seen this like, in 25 years. Like, oh my God. Yeah. And, and so I think, I think to me, I think that's, that is, that's still the most fun thing. That, oh my fucking God, this is the coolest. It's that, it's that instant shit shock. Ever. It's the instant shock factor, right? And then not only, it's, it's like, but it's a shock factor that sticks because, you know, if you put the, you know, you put this on social media, right? I just went live on Facebook. Right. Like the full crash of people hasn't hit yet. Right. That's coming tonight and tomorrow and the next day and a week down the road. And the cool part is, is, is when people ask them, like, dude, what, what were you doing? You know, wh how did you even get there? Like what, what had to happen in your life to get into this trailer to have you come here, right? You know, right. usually appreciate that. But to come here to record this, to record the whole thing. How did I meet you? Like, there's a whole chain of questions that that all get built in. As the, the, there's there's so much, and I think that's the coolest part too. Because I also appreciate that as well. Like, I, I have so many people that come in and go, "Okay, I have all the questions <laughs> <So> <laughs> from the start to the middle to the to the end to where are you going? What are you doing? Sure. Where are you at now? Sure. How? Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I do this? Like, you know, so I, that's that's that that's the cool part too. Uh, and then just, you know what, man? Like, I I, I re-listened to our podcast that we did uh, almost two years ago. Fucking flies! Dude. I know, dude. Dude, flies! It, it, it's it's insane. It's insane how fast it is. And then we, you and I were talking about a thing where you, you you asked, so like, where's this going? What are you doing? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Sure. And strap in and take this sure. ride. And then you then go into this whole diatribe about, about knowledge, about yeah, learning, sure. about why you would sort of do what you sure. do. And that sort of struck me because sitting back here and talking to you now, like I thought I knew so much then. Yeah. Because cause I, was, I was doing this for so long already. Sure. Yep. But you know, before all this. And then now sitting here, I'm like, I didn't fucking know anything. Yeah. Yep. And then, like, today, I'm still <laughs> learning. And then uh, that's the thing that you were talking about. Like, you're still, you still get to learn. That's I the best part, dude. That's that's the coolest thing. I, uh, Mark Mark Twain said something that, uh, again, about, was two, about two years ago that stuck with me. And then, again, it just, it reminds me of this moment that we had together. Uh, the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. Yes. So... I'm like, dude. I just gotta keep. I just gotta keep doing shit. I gotta keep learning. Hence the reason why I started going to Cuba. Hence the reason why I started doing that shit. Just to learn more. Just to sure. continue to develop the craft and bring experiences to people that yeah. when they come in, they go, "Wow, are you fucking kidding me? You have that cigar. Sure. You have that bourbon. You have that scotch." So yeah, That's, yeah. it's 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 funny, right? Because like I um I, like I'm a fireman, and in the firehouse, it's like people are like you know. They don't. They don't. You don't see the right, big picture, going, right? It's so. We hard. are going in right now, by the way. Hey, I'm in. I'm in. We're going in right now. And they, they, you know, it's tough for people to see the big picture, and not just the firehouse, but like even my family, right? My parents, you know, everybody. They're like, right. why do you do this? Why are you? Why are you killing yourself every day to grow? You know, why do you read books? Why do you go on road trips, right? And I truly believe 
that, and and I preach this at least as much as I possibly can is is when you're when you're going through life, if you're not experiencing, if you're not putting yourself in an uncomfortable, you know, I, I love doing road trips, right? If I go down to Florida, there's right. people are like, oh, what if your car breaks down? Well, what if my car breaks down? Right. What am I? How am I going to react? Because as crazy as it sounds, that's going to make me a better person than never taking the road trip ever. A, a fucking man. A, a man. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more, man. Like, I don't think. I don't think that people. Oh, this is me. I don't. I don't think that people are comfortable with getting uncomfortable. Yeah. I think we sort of we sort of lost that as well. Like nobody wants to get uncomfortable anymore. Yeah. You don't want to feel weird. You I don't. Right. Feel no one wants to ask questions. Yep. And like to me, as I've gotten older, I want to ask more fucking questions. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I want to understand. Hey, Say, cheers, salute, brother. baby. Uh, cheers, doing again. You, you, what are we drinking? You are you are smoking and drinking shit that you cannot get here in America. Let's start. <laughs> let's start with that. Let's start with that. Oh my god. Oh my god. God, that's fucking good. God, that is phenomenal. Good. This that is, is phenomenal. So this is called Blanton's Gold. Now, okay. Blanton's, for most folks who, who, who know, you can get here in America, no issue. Uh, it's one of the most popular bourbons in the world. So much that uh, about... Thank you, appreciate that, brother. So much that um, okay. several several years ago, you could have walked into any liquor store mm-hmm. and you could have gotten yourself a bottle of Blanton's, 49 bucks, out the door, you wouldn't have thought anything of it twice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, because of the whole bourbon craze, how everything sure. has worked out, and what people, uh, you, you know, how, how crazy bourbon has gotten. You oh, my God, you yeah. Can't, you can't find a bottle. And if you find a bottle, it's probably starting at 150 bucks. Jesus Christ. So, uh, Blanton's is made by Buffalo Trace, and Buffalo Trace exists in Kentucky. And uh, they make that for the U.S. and all over the world. Now, these two products, this is called Blanton's Gold, and there's another one, Blanton's Straight from the Barrel. Okay. Uh, Blanton's Gold is a little bit of a higher proof. Uh, Blanton's single barrel ranges anywhere from usually 88 to 90 proof, generally. Sure. Because um, it's a single barrel bourbon, you never know what you get. And they make uh, Blanton's Gold 101 proof every fucking time. Oh my it comes, god! So it's a little bit of a higher proof, and it is. I, I saw your face. It's, oh, it's, a, it's, it's phenomenal. It's out. It's phenomenal. It's out. So where do you get a bottle like this? Ah, and you so even find a bottle like this? This is only sold in the European markets. Okay. Same thing with Blanton straight from the barrel. So I have. I have a gentleman who uh, who imports it for us. Uh, I have to leave, you know, liaison. That's crazy. Him. It's got a, so it leaves the country, goes there to get back in the country. That's it. That's the craziest shit I've ever. Remember, because you can't you can't buy alcohol and you mm. can't import it in the U.S. You actually physically have to go and get it and bring it back. That's insane. It is insane. So that's uh that's one of the things that he does. Uh, he does that for a living full time, and he. he is that crazy? Like, what do you do? Oh, I go to Europe. I, I buy. I, I buy alcohol. Bootleg alcohol, alcohol back to basically. the states. It's, you know, it's a real that's life what, bootlegger. That's what, that's what he does, and uh, he makes a living off it. So uh, God yeah. bless. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you to the man that brought that in because that is phenomenal. That is that is that's good. It's good fucking shit. And then um, you're smoking. Uh, so there is a. So as I have, um, and I'm sure we'll talk about my, my travels to Cuba. Um, as I've gotten into Cuba. And as I've gotten into the cigar culture there, there is uh, a gentleman there, Alejandro Gonzalez Arias, who is one of the top rollers in Cuba. Oh, my God. He owns his own shop mm-hmm. outside of the Hotel Comodoro in Cuba. Uh, right, uh, It's right inside Miramar. It's about 15 minutes west of Central Central Havana. And he, uh, he buys tobacco from Habanos S.A., uh, out of usually one of the higher like higher end tobacco regions, sure. And he rolls his own shit. And this, so shit, he rolled these. Yes, he rolls these. He, he does. He basically does custom rolls, which essentially you give him a size, you give him uh, a type of roll, and he can roll it. He's he's considered one of the master rollers in Cuba. There's like nine levels, and he is a master nine level roller. And he that's is, insane. And he he's a beautiful gentleman. Uh, he got me. You know, he's on Facebook. I'll make sure to tag him. At, Alex, thank you as always, man. Uh, he is, he's incredible. And his tobacco is incredible. Yeah. And uh, as, the whole, this, this is, yeah. we're, this is literally two full experiences. Yes. Yes. At the exact same time. Yes. And that's what, that's what makes it so unique because you can't, there's nowhere else you're walking into in this country and getting anything fucking like this. Period. Stop. Period. Stop. It's not, it's not happening. So, um, yeah, this is this is this is what we're smoking, and it's again, 
Sorry, the so now, do you sell these on your? On your I do, man. So we, we have three of his custom rolls. We have his robusto size. We have the torpedo size, mm. and then we have his B Bihike fifty six roll. It's a fifty six ring gauge. Oh my god! Uh, six and a half inches. It's a fucking monster. Jesus. And uh, for guys who like bigger ring size, we have we, we have. That what is well. with that? The I biggest... listen, man. I, this is about for me. This is about a perfect smoke. I was gonna I say this torpedoes. is. Uh, they're good length, good ring, and you see these guys. Well, it's a lot of the bikers. You know why? Because as they're riding, they can't have a little cigar because it'll burn out quick. The mm. wind. So they need a big ring gauge that'll stay lit. Uh, wow. That's why you see you see the you see the bikers come in. They got these big yeah, they're, they're fucking huge. honking cigar. I don't, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> that's yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So all right, so now that we're in Cuba here, let, tell me a little bit about you because because. From, I'm, I'm, I'm basing everything from the last show, and and, uh, right. and you've been crazy busy, and I've been crazy yes. busy since the yes. last few years. So this is this is cool to re- reignite this. Um, so you've done a lot of traveling. You have yes. a, you have now have two new trailers. Yes. Well, what happened since the last time last show? What's Cuba like? Because I, I, I genuinely want to know. I'm, I appreciate. I, I, I want to go in the worst way. Uh, I will take you. Wait, listen, whenever you're ready, man, we can go. I will hold you to that. I, no, I mean I'm down there once a month. So. Oh my God! Yeah, you literally, really literally once. What's a month. it cost to get down there? Uh, it's usually about a three hundred dollar flight. Oh, oh the actual it? the actual hotel is one hundred twenty bucks. No problem. Anyway, no anyway, problem. And if you even wanted to. Like they have, um, they they call them uh, like you know different haciendos or uh, you know different. You could stay forty dollars a night and you get hooked up with breakfast. Granted, listen, it's the room is eh, you got AC, but you're not fucking hanging out in the room. Uh, Airbnb cheap right. rooms are probably probably worse, and I will yeah. say that I have stayed no. in those. Yeah, no, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. So we, it would be it'd be a good fucking time. But all right, so let's start, man. The last time we talked two years ago, the the one trailer was going good. But I told you at the time, dude, it was getting insane already. And from that moment that we left, um, I, I got I knew I had to do the second trailer. Sure. Banged out the second trailer, and everything is everything from that point on and that scope is going well. From all the Jones Beach concerts that we're doing to the fucking sporting events. So you're allowed to sell bourbon and stuff like that at Jones Beach? Yeah, absolutely. So I open up, uh, you know, we, we, we crack open a menu. We usually do it out in the parking lot. Sure, sure. Uh, sometimes I get hired for tailgates, private tailgates that we'll do there. Um, you know, and then uh, I, I think I think I told you the story uh, that, at, that at some point, um, God, oh, God. All right, so I'll have to relapse on that, but I forget the guy's name. The singer that we did here, he's based in, in, in Long Island, uh, that we did a huge party for. Things are going great. Uh, they're absolutely going great. But it's just sort of that. It's sort of that you get this nagging sense that okay, cool, we've mastered this, but now like, what's the next thing? Sure, what's next? And everyone's like, like sort of like, dude, you're, you're doing it, man. Just just keep going. Wait, you're looking. You want to do something else? That's the sort of thing that you and I talked about. Like, hey, man, like, all right, cool. You you're comfortable. You're doing this. You you've made it. Now what's what's the next thing for me? Sure. What's the what's, next wrong, what's bro? What's the next step? So as I'm sort of doing this, you know, we get so many women that come in, and they they absolutely love this. Sure. They they think it's killer. We have such a good time, and they say to themselves, "Man, if you did something for us, that would be so fucking cool too." So you know, I'm sitting there one night, like I'm thinking, "All right." So I'm essentially what, what I'm doing is I'm bringing a cigar lounge and a distillery to somebody's house. Sure. House, what birthday party, have... apartment, so whatever. Right. What, what do we have here on Long Island that people fucking also travel for? And it just hit me. People people go to the wineries. Oh, yeah. What if I could bring the vineyard to you? What if sure. I could bring that fucking experience to you? Sure. Here we are, man. So, like, literally that that last year, in, in the middle of the summer, as I'm working seven days a week, they get something I just can't get the fuck out of my head. Sure. I have to see it to completion. i got to build it. So, late nights... Uh, you know, the that's how it goes, bro. Right? <laughs> when do you got free time? Out? When everybody else is sleeping. I start. I, I I go down to North Carolina. I pick up another Airstream Vintage 1962 Overlander. Fucking came out, man. I redid the whole thing. Did it into a rustic wine bar. Fucking came out killer. And the first two parties, man. Uh, we're bringing out cheese. We have a wine glass painting thing outside. That oh, that's sick. Can fucking yeah. Hang out, paint wine glasses. We bake them on site. Oh my god! So they can fucking take them right away. You put away. them right in their oven. You bring yeah, I got, I got a whole like mini oven that we do it right. Oh my front. god! Bake it right there for you. Twelve Long Island vineyards inside. People, same thing. They go fucking ballistic over it. Dude, this is a cool thing. Now we don't got to. You don't got to get a limo. 
You don't get all yep. your friends. It all comes right Everyone's there. Everyone's got to drive out there. And by the time everybody so pitches places. in for everything, it's probably the price comparison is Six, right there. Sixty dollars ahead. Yeah. Oh my god. Ahead. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. That's it's, that's the, that's actually way cheaper than I thought it would have been. It's the same thing for this. Works out to sixty dollars ahead. Oh my god. So that's for that. That was so. That was fucking great. And then you know, you start. All right. So I got the I got, I got the cigar and bourbon thing. I have the wine and cheese thing. We're doing golf. We're doing this. We're doing that. Then people, you know, same thing you probably get. Hey man, do you know so and so? Oh yeah. Do you know? Hey man, do you know where I can get this? Or hey hey man, you know where I can add on this? And all of a sudden people come start coming up to me and going, "Oh cool, so you have this." Who would you recommend for food? Mm. Who would you recommend for? We need like the porta potties. Mm-hmm. Like who would you recommend? Sure. So I you build your then, own little sphere. I, so you start hearing these things and you're like, well, why couldn't I offer that? Mm. Well, why couldn't I start? So I'm in the midst right now. I am about to buy a fire truck. No. And I'm about to convert a fire truck into a food truck. That is sick. And not like one of these things, oh, the fire truck. Like I've seen these fire trucks. Like they have a grill attached to it. It's cool. Like, you know, they took it. Like you're building it into it. No, this, uh, we're going to fucking gut this thing and build on it. When you and, buy that fire truck, let me know. I will go wherever you are I'm to go see it. I'm telling you, it, it is. It, it's it's in the works. We're we're getting we're getting ready to buy it in, in, in hopefully about two to three weeks. You know, I don't know shit about fire trucks. I got a guy. I've got a guy come in. Hey, does the engine work? Hey, will it work? How yeah. long will it, you know? If it goes bad, yeah. Do I need to? Is it a special thing I got to do? Sure. So, um, it gets same thing. It's a vintage. It's a vintage fire truck. Sure. From 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 seventy five. Yep. Like, yep. So and I can tell those that, are even right? hard to find, yeah. especially in decent condition. Yeah, in, in decent condition. And then uh, it's just same thing. I'm working on uh, buying. You know these the the cool all inclusive port bodies that you hook up. It's got it's like the amenities you walk in are, are sick looking. I uh, want that. We we'll like to get a couple tents. So you're literally. To, oh, so you're going to the full blown business mode here. I love it. Uh, right. Cause, because again, you 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 start like you show up and you're like. Oh man, like they have all these other things. Uh, I could have, a, and I, oh, I think I, I, I don't even, did I, I don't even know if I had this last time. I got a 33 by 19 foot inflatable Irish pub. You were, I think, he, oh shit. You oh, so you I've went to Vincenzo's. Or, Vincenzo's. Yeah, Vincenzo's. Yeah. I've been in it, but I, I'm trying to remember because, because I, I think we did the podcast beforehand. Yes, yeah, so it was before. And you were talking about. I did not. Have so, it. so the people on the show don't actually know about it okay. right yet. Got it. But um, yes, I because you you did tell me about it, and I was like, oh my god, and then. I flew the drone in it. Yes, that's and right. That was yes, the scariest yes. thing in the world because I have little propellers <laughs> that are going that's right, thousands of rounds per minute yes, to keep yes, this drone yes, flying, yes. and I'm like, it only takes a, a quarter of a foot in the wrong direction. That's right. To just <laughs> rip a hole in this thing, and I just blew ten. I don't even know what they cost, but the repair alone would not be cheap, and in no. a good, con- in a no. conveniently hideable spot. <laughs> So yes, I do. I do know exactly. So that, so, what do you do in there? You set up a te- you set up a whole table, or you just I put tables in there. I've done a casino night where we put tables in there. Uh, you know, we've done just a thing where we you know we set up regular tables and people come in and use it as a tent feature. Uh, you know, we set it up as a cigar lounge where we put fire pits in there and do sure. a whole variety of things. Yeah, that's thing. It's totally customizable, so we can do anything in it. I've done yeah. fairs and festivals with it. Sure, where it's a showpiece. Sure. Um, we use that as a it's the biggest time. thing in the world. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And anything, man. So that's uh. So we have that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So really turning it into, not not a party company, but an, an entertainment company. Sure. Because again, I don't I don't want to be. Yeah, you're not I'm, doing I'm not, bounce houses. You're, know, not doing, you're not doing. You're not doing shit. wedding tents. And again, it's all it's all adult themed stuff. I don't think there's really anything when you look around our market that's adult themed parties. That again, yeah. we could show up and we can throw you a fucking kick ass party and. Holistically, have everything for you. Porta potties. Uh, again, I work with the one-stop a, shop. This right. is what you want. Here's here's the menu. Right. I partner with um, a hostess for hire, so we can bring in bartenders. We can bring in a waitress staff. They're fucking a class. So we can literally, uh, we can we can bring in anything for you. And I think that's where the scope of this is going. That'll sure. be cool now. So it's more than just we come with this. We have you're throwing a, you you need to throw that 40th or 50th birthday party that's off the chain. We got you. Yeah. Got you. Have everything. That's sick. So, that's sick. Um, that's that's where that's where I think I, I think I'm headed. I love it, dude. I love yeah. it. Is isn't it so crazy? Like, because I experience this all the time, and it's like, because I'm I, I just roll back the clock like two years, right? And 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 so the so the podcast guests that are listening now 
may very well have been some of the first guests, and some of sure. them may have not been some of the first guests. And it's like, you know, some of the guys have been with me since I start, was at my old company, right? My old, my old IT company. And now it's like, it's so crazy to like put this whole thing together. And it's like, okay, well, I started my company, right? I I barely knew my ass from my elbow when I started my company. Like, I'll be the first one to admit it. But I raised my hand too. I thought, I thought I had it down. I thought I had it. And then you realize you're like, oh. Again, same thing I told you again. I I don't know what I don't know. Uh huh. So then you get there and you're like, fuck, I didn't know anything. I right? I was I was just doing shit and thinking that man, it all works. I understand it all. It's it, it, it's you know I got this. And then you know I I look back, dude. I I looked the first original menu that I I had sitting in here with you. There was thirty different bourbons and scotches. I had twelve cigars. Like, sure. I gave you an Arturo Fuente 858. Yeah, it's sure. a good cigar. Sure. But you can walk into any shop and fucking get this. And get this. this You'll this, never. This, 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 this is like. No. Now, no. like, we're operating on, on a different level. No. It's, uh, I actually, it's funny. Dude, it, so I'm a big proponent of the universe. I'm not a believer in God, but I'm a big proponent, proponent of the universe. Same. And, like, this, this just weird shit that happens, right? So, just constantly, like, we, I went out to, uh, to Rudy's Bar and Grill in Pacquiao. Oh, no, Rudy's day. is the shit. Rudy's is the shit. Rudy's so, is the shit. Shout out to Rudy's. Yeah, shout out to, to Rudy's and Mike Laurie over there. So, um, so we walk in and I meet my buddy Tommy and his, his girlfriend Michelle there with my girlfriend. And, um, so it's funny, right? I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, little, little, like, little white lies, pranks, things of like course. that. Sure, that sure, just sure. get people like, like, oh my God, I can't believe you pulled that over on me. So I'm like, oh, you know, Deanna's buying all the drinks. She just hit a scratch off ticket for $2,000, right? And they're like, little by Christmas, she's, she, the girl Michelle goes to my girlfriend. She's like, oh my God, congratulations on the lottery. Like, that's amazing. Thanks for buying drinks tonight. And my girlfriend's like, what? I do that to my wife all the time. <laughs> like, I'll tell her that somebody knows something, that I'm doing something with them. And then she'll go back to them and go, hey, so you're doing that thing with Tom that's so awesome. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so, no, no clue. <laughs> right? so, so I found I found two vintage 1920s, and I'll show you after the podcast. Sure. Uh, two 1920s dragon ashtrays. Like for us in the cigar world, uh-huh. that is like that is like the the Indiana Jones came in Temple of Doom. I, I I found the golden statue and took the egg. Right. Sure. I, I found the Holy Grail. Sure. That's us as the Holy Grail. Sure. So I find these things, and she has a friend that paints, uh-huh. and she's an awesome artist. So I so I tell my wife, hey, I got these ashtrays. I already talked to Sarah. Mm. She's gonna fucking paint for me. I didn't even talk to Sarah. Yet. Sure, sure. So, so she's, she doesn't know it yet, but she's gonna, gonna, go gonna do that. She's gonna go back to Sarah and be like. Hey man, I, I you doing a painting for Tom? That's so awesome. And Sarah's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Sure. <laughs> oh, so so the story gets even better. And this is the whole this is the whole universe yes. thing, and, and it's leading into the story. So Please. so we go out, we party, we have a good time, we have a great time, whatever. So the next day we come back to the office, and I, and I work late. So I'm not a morning person. I wake up nine ten in the morning, and that's when I start my day. And and if I wake up any Amen. earlier, honestly, work doesn't get done because I'm <laughs> the brain is not pro- firing the right way because I'm a late. I'm an owl. I'm an owl. I, I'm the exact opposite. Oh, you're a morning guy. Oh, the exact opposite. My favorite. My favorite thing is to leave the office at 12, 1, you know, 11 o'clock at night, and there's nobody in the parking lot. I, I don't even know what that time looks like. Oh, no. Nobody in the parking lot. when I'm doing a party. But. Nobody's, nobody's in the parking lot. I drive home. There's nobody in the road, and I go, this is my favorite time. You, don't want, you want to know why? Because all my competitors are sleeping, and I'm getting ahead because they chose to sleep. That, that's what goes, I'm, I'm sick in the head. So we get here, and there's a, there's a lottery ticket on the ground, right? And whatever, it's on the ground. It must be garbage. Sure enough, my girlfriend flicks it over with the foot. She goes, oh, my God, it's a winner. Picks it up. The thing wasn't scratched off to win the money. Now, it was only 20 bucks. It wasn't 2000 Right, right. That would have been insane. Still. And sure enough, we walk over to the gas station. And it hits, And he's like, yeah, here's 20 bucks. Hands are 20 bucks. I'm like, oh, my God, put it out in the universe. So just before this podcast, I, I, hop, in this, I hop in my office. And I'm watching a little bit of YouTube, seeing what's going on. Right. And... Um, and there's this guy I follow, Graham Stephan, and he talks all about finance and stuff like that. Brilliant guy. And he goes, he goes, this is what success is like. And this is the best um, representation of success and growing as a person. Sure. He goes, it, the success world is a ladder. And everybody starts the bottom rung. You're not even on the ladder, right? you got to right. find the ladder. you got to take the leap of faith, start your own side business, right. whatever it is. Right. right? And every, every rung is a new level where you get to see more and more of the horizon. Right. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, wow, that kind of makes sense because like I really didn't know my ass from my elbow back in the day, right? You didn't, you didn't even, couldn't even conceive having two more trailers. And then all of a sudden you get one trailer, and then you're on there, and then you start to see the opportunities, and then you get another trailer, right? And then I offer more services, and but it started from somewhere, right? I, and and my full timer who's starting, my buddy Kevin, uh, actually he's going to be a partner in my company too, but nice. Um, 
it, it's so funny because he's you know we're get, we're getting so busy. He's like, dude. He's like, not for nothing. He's like, one day he's like, what is the po- what value does the podcast provide to this company? And I go and like because he doesn't see it right. He's not in it. He's not having. It. And I go, I go, Kevin. It's I know this is gonna sound so weird, but you gotta trust me on this. It all comes back to the podcast. Yep. He's like, he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, most of our accounts came from a podcast or a podcast guest. Or I entice them with a podcast. Hey, come right. on. You know, if you sign up, by the way, I'm going to have you on my podcast, this, that, and the other thing. They're like, oh my God, I'm going to be on somebody's podcast, right? right? I'm not conning them into doing something. No. It's totally free. It's an open platform. Right. We can dialogue with right. whatever. But then they get to see who I am. They come to see the studio. They come to see, you know, what it's all about. Right. It's not just a man behind the curtain. And now it's like, you know, going from, you know, five figures and like struggling, struggling, struggling to now a full-fledged six-figure business, money's coming in the door, we got processes figured out, bigger accounts are coming in, and now it's like, okay, great, we're my goal is to hit this much this year, and then either I want to hire more people, I want to get bigger accounts, or I want to go into another area of business and be an angel investor or something like that. And he's like, what? Because it's those rungs, right? And I'm not anywhere near the top. Right. I'll be the first one to admit it. And I don't no, even know same, what same. I don't even know what success looks like up there. Same. But same. looking down, I'm like, I quit my job. I had maybe a thousand bucks in the bank account. I had a couple weeks of pay because they they were generous enough to pay me. And literally just I built the studio hand and knee, hammer and nails in, and I'm like, oh my god. Right? And then it just keeps coming back to and he's like he's like, Oh my god. And now it's like now that I'm painting the picture, right. he's like, Oh, it makes sense now. And I'm like, it just, it has to start somewhere. It does. And I, I think there's there's two things that I would I would tell people, right? Like, be willing to grab that first. Oh, grab that ladder? Yeah. Grab that, A, grab that first rung on the ladder. Like, you got to be willing to take a risk. Fucking roll the dice. Just fucking do it. But then same thing, don't be, af- don't be afraid to crawl. Because I think people in their mind, like when they see, when they see this, when they hear my operation, they see what I'm doing. Like, that is so awesome, man. You're doing so well for yourself. But, right, just as you said, don't forget, I didn't start with this. I, I started by going out, renting a white tux every fucking week. And oh, going, you rented that tux? Yeah, I rented, I rented that tux, bro. <laughs> rented that tux. Going out, I I borrowed a fucking white table from my, from my fucking mother-in-law. I stole a tablecloth from a fucking cousin. I had a couple of cigars. Dude, that's what I it takes, bro. I had some bottles bro. of bourbon. And I said, I'm going to do a wedding table. And you know what? The first, the first three I did were all free. Sure. I did it for my cousin. Yep. I did it for a friend. People I did it for, it. Another, for another cousin. And you're taking a hit, but that's what you do. To- but you do it. And then all of a sudden, someone goes, that's fucking cool. Someone books you for a wedding. And then you book a bunch of more weddings. Then you then, right, I always had the idea for this. Dude, somehow I'm doing it. So now I'm going to liquidate all my life savings. I had a son on the way. I And same thing. I had a fucking, at the end, end of it all, I had a couple of dollars in a bank account. So and like, Fuck! I hope this works. Oh yeah. So so here's a question for you because because yes. people hear hear me say it all the time and I'm curious to see what your answer is. What do you think is the key factor to making it succeed? You you, you gotta you gotta sacrifice. sacrifice. Like, yeah. It's 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 to me it's sacrifice. It's not the want. It's not the it's not the desire. I think everybody innately has that. It's what the fuck are you willing to give up? Yeah. Like, I gave up. I literally gave up uh, my relationship with my wife in the beginning. I gave up my time with my son. I gave up my health. I gave up uh, free time. The thing is, a, everyone's got the desire. Everybody wants to win. Oh, Everybody of wants to fucking win. It's easy to want Every, it. But it comes <laughs> up to the point is when it hits Saturday and you haven't made money yet in two and a half weeks... And it's Saturday, and someone's having a fucking cool ass party somewhere, or a birthday party, or an event that you want to be at. But you have the opportunity to go out and do a free event that you're probably not going to make a ton of money. That you know that sucks. Like I've done, oh, I've yeah. done a soccer fundraiser where oh. I've literally made, I made like twenty bucks. Like nobody bought cigars. Yep. No, but I got some social media exposure out of it. Yep. I yep. gave away some cards. Yep. That's all it takes. Are you willing to sacrifice that fucking night, that time, to go do some shit event that hopefully down the road pays off for you? Yep. Somewhere, sometime. And I think that's where people 
That's where the rubber meets the road. If you're not willing to fucking give up a bunch of shit now to be super successful later, you're never you're never gonna get it. You're never gonna get it. I agree. It. You're never gonna get it because there dude, there's times where I've been sick, I've been throwing up. There's times where dude Jesus Christ, I've worked for fucking two months straight. Oh yeah. And guess what? Yeah, I'm gonna work for another two months straight. Because yeah. now, now, now I just put my feet up. I get a virtual receptionist, man. My phone rings all day. They take the messages. They book shit for me. And I just... Yeah, you just... Yeah. You know, as you grow, it's this... It's this beautiful thing of like, you know, fig, you know, FSO. I'm a big fan of FSO. Figure shit out, right? You know, you're never going to know what problem's going to come up. Oh, right? I'm FSO. Stolen. Dude, Stolen. Please, Stolen. please, 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 please. And uh, it's, it's literally FSO all day. Like, figure that shit out. Like... I love, like, when people, and it's actually funny because I just talked about this on the, on, on the other podcast I was just on. Sure. And, you know, it, like I said, everybody wants to succeed. Well, right. Everyone has like, it's everyone's an innate got desire. desire. Everyone has it. Every, yeah. Everybody has no, it. No, I've never met anybody on this planet. I don't want to make money. Fuck that. Everyone yeah, wants to I've make money. I've never met somebody that's like, I'm okay with where I am. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wait, content, like, will ne- like, just... No, they always want something. They always want to succeed in something. They might be content with their money, but they want to succeed in their relationship. They, right. might, they might be content with their relationship, but they want to make more money. They might, right. you know, or they want to pick up a hobby and get good at a hobby. Whatever it is, right? It's it's that sacrifice and that grind, right? I, like I said, I love going home at midnight. I right. love knowing that all my competitors right. are tucked away next to their wives and with their kids in their house, and they're not willing to they put in. They don't want to sacrifice yep. that time. They don't want to sacrifice. Those nights, they don't want to give that up. I got news for you. You're going to have to. Yeah, Especially oh, yeah. in the beginning. Like, no one's coming up and going, hey, man, here's my multi, multi-million dollar idea. Here's the money for it. Go FSO. Go mm. figure shit out. Because if, if we did, all of us would figure it out. Oh, yeah. We would all sit there and figure it the fuck out. Yep. But that's not happening. Yep. So you're going to have to give shit up. You're going to have to give a lot of shit up. In a lot very, of shit A up. lot of shit. More than you're ever be comfortable with. And that's the second thing. Get uncomfortable. You gotta, yeah, yeah, you gotta have to be uncomfortable. You gotta be uncomfortable with some, with sometimes your bank account being in the negative, and I can count on my fucking hands, toes, and every hair on my head how many times I've been in, had a negative bank account. Sure, For sure, because it happens. Because you're gonna overspend, you're gonna overwork, you're gonna overexert yourself. But, you're also gonna buy shit that you're like, I thought I needed and I don't yeah, need, and, and right. And, that's, that's, that's part of figuring shit out. Fig, yeah, you figure it out. Like, that's part of the growth process, right? I'm sure that you've bought things where you're like, this was uh, yeah, that didn't work. Ah, that, was, that did not fucking yeah. work. Or it's it's worse, in my opinion, right? Money can be made pretty quickly most of the time. It's time, right? Mm. Dedicating time and energy. Like, I got shafted by a client that owes me a couple sure. thousand bucks. I'm sure. But, like, I had to get shafted to know that I need to get more on top of my billing and make sure that I stay on top of people. And if you're late after, you know, 60 right. days... Bro, shit's getting shut down. Like right. that's it. That's I, it. I run a business. I got payroll now. Like, yep. None I mean, of this now, can happen. You used, you used to be able to pay me the day of. Now you you pay me two weeks in advance. That's, oh yeah. You know that's how that's how that's how shit works. Yep. So it, you know you it, find you, you find out a lot, and that's that's awesome. That that's the beauty of doing this. Sure. Like, that's the beauty of doing 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 what, doing what we do. Is like you just man, you get to learn so much. I fucking love it. I I, I love learning. I I I found out that. I am so addicted now to 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 love how much I get to learn. And for you, dude, you must. Oh my god, I can't. I can't even begin to fucking crack open your skull. And understand <laughs> how much you know. Like that's and that that to me that is like the biggest. That's like the biggest pleasure of all. It's it's the coolest thing, and like it's so rewarding. Mm. Like you know, it's so rewarding. It and and, and it's funny because Kevin and I'm gonna say it right now, but everything comes back to the podcast, right? Like. I had a podcast. Somebody was like, dude, you got to go get top. Shake this fucking guy down and get him on your show. Like, just get him on the show. Sure. Right? And I was like, uh, okay. Sounds right. great. And like, harassing and harassing. Hey, come on the show. Right. Come on the show. Come on the show. Come right. on the show. Right? You show up. And we. I don't even think we met in person before you came no. here. Mm-hmm. And literally, you're setting up this whole thing to come on my show. I'm moving my studio out. You made it super convenient for me. Like, I would have gone all the way to your fucking No, I man. I would have gone to Texas I, I, for you. Right. And it's just like... It's like okay, great. Well, what did I gain out of it? I gained a lot of content. I made a, I made a friend. Like, w- the friendships that I develop on the podcast. That, that. Even like, you have, you've had two kids since the last time I saw you. Right. You have a whole, you have two new trailers now. But like, we've shared something. It's not like I'm sitting in here and you're, you're. You, I don't know if you're considered bar. Do you have a name for what you do? Bartending, serving. I, I call it a cigar tender. So, uh, so you're not cigar tending, right? Like this is a whole new level and it's like hey 
now that Tom's my friend, if I was in a pinch or I needed something or like, hey, can you help me out with this or whatever it is, that's what my podcast community has become. Like, they're they're my friends. Even though I don't see them all the time, everybody's, you know, you run a business, I run a business, a lot of my podcast guests run a business to some degree sure. or another. For sure. It's... It might not be, hey, I can hang out with you on a Saturday, right. but shit, we're here at what, on a, on a Wednesday? On a Wednesday. 12.41, smoking cigars, drinking burp. Like, that's the friendships that I that Amen. I gain. Amen. And, and like, oh, by the way, I'm having a birthday party in August. I'll keep you posted. Um, would love for you to attend. Um, with or without the psychic chaos, right. but I want you to be there. But, like, that's the coolest part, right? Like, I, I've just developed these, these friendships and these relationships where it's so much better than any... You know, oh, we're not drinking buddies. No, 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 we're like friends. I'll call you if I need something. I'm sure that you'll call me. Hey, a second opinion. Hey, bro, I need a second opinion on this. You know, we might not see each other all that much. Without a doubt. But that's how it is. Everybody's got a busy life. You got a wife, you got kids. I have a girlfriend. You know, it, right. business is booming, right? It, it's just the craziest thing in the world to think about. It is, man. And so, you know, it, it's, it's the same thing. Like, you, you know, I have now people that reach out to me because they know how many people I see, how many people I talk to. Hey man, I know you talk to a lot of people. Do you know someone who can help me with this or do this? Or let me ask you something. Like it's turned, it's it's crazy how it turns into this cool thing where not only am I doing this, but I'm helping people on a regular basis with all types of shit. Sure. And I think that's I think that's a ton of fun too. Yeah. A ton of fucking. Yeah, fun. you're 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 literally helping people. Right. And enjoying yourself along the right. way. You know, I that's the other thing that drives me bananas, and I'm sure that you you'll relate, but. When people say, I'm not happy with where I'm at, or like, I don't like my job, the economy is booming. To, for you to go find a new job, might not be the easiest thing in the world. No. But how much, how much happiness can you sacrifice for what? Go do something you like, even if it's a little less money. Being happy at work... Kinda, is far more important. It's it's you know so important. And and the world re- rewards you ten out of ten times. Yep. By doing what you like to do and yep. helping other people, it's, making it an experience it, or something like that. I, I again, I just God, there's so many examples of that. I I I, I truly despise when someone co- when someone comes up to me and says those exact words. Man, I wish I could do what you do, dude. You can. Yeah. Yeah, abs- that's that's the fucking best part of all of this. No one is stopping you. The only thing that's stopping you is again you're afraid, yep. and you don't want to sacrifice yep. because yes, it is gonna be painful. No one's handing you a bunch of money to go do what you want. No yeah, one. Nobody. No, nobody. No until you have a plan. Money. Until you figure that shit right. out already, and you're like, hey, I need I need a million bucks to get this thing going. Yeah. Okay, great. Now somebody will give you money. Right. Start at the lowest common denominator and fucking go do it. Yep. Do yep. it again. Sacrifice your free time. Sacrifice the fun. Sacrifice everything to if you want to truly go be happy and do that thing, go fucking do it. Yep. No yep. one's stopping you. Nobody's. Nobody. Look, Nobody. And, and here's the, here's the other really cool part. Like we live in a world now where there's so much opportunity. If you want to go do this, call up Tom. Yes. Hey Tom, I'm willing to work for you for free for a couple months. Can I come work for you for free? I want to learn the business. I want to learn what it's all about. And here's the best part about this entire thing. And this is what a lot of people, in my opinion, can't wrap their head around, right? He may be a, a potential future competitor for you. Right. But on the flip side of things, he might say, hey, can I buy a franchise from you? Can I buy a trailer and partner up with you and you can help me fund this whole thing? Or whatever it is. Like, that's the totally. beautiful part of capitalism. It allows you to do all of these things. Like, there's nobody that says, like, nope. Can't do that. Yeah. No, like, if you want to learn it, call Tom up. Hey, Tom, I'm willing to put in a couple months, a couple days a month to help run your company. I want to learn everything there is about it. And at the end of it, this is, no surprise, at the end of it, I want to do what you're doing. I want to own my... People all the time come up to me and goes, dude, I want to do this. I say, And I look them dead in the eye and say, go do it. This yep. is not copyrighted. Sure. This is not... This is I, I can't put a... I, I can put a trademark on the name. Sure. I said, but I can't copyright this. Yeah. I can't stop you. I said... If you have questions, I will help you. I'll, I'll give you the soup to nuts so you avoid all the pitfalls that I fucking avoided. Yep. You're literally I'll getting you a roadmap works. written by somebody right. else who's what already works, been there. What doesn't work? <laughs> and yeah, at the end of the day, dude, if you want to hop on the name, the name's already built. I'm going to fucking 14,000 followers on social media. The fa- dude, we, uh, Massachusetts Long Island Cuban, uh, Massachusetts Cuban Cigar and Burp Experience, go. Yeah, take it. Take it go. and run, bro. Take and run. I'll buy your first trailer. No. You gotta run that thing. Yeah. You don't. If, if it fails, I'll buy the trailer back, or, or it's my trailer oh, back. Yeah. 
Bingo. See you later. And I'll re I'll rebrand the whole, the th the thing on the inside. I have all the assets now, and I just gotta Bingo. hire another person. And and like, I talk about that all the time. They're like they're like almost blown away by that. Like, dude, I will help you. And they're like, <laughs> wait, wait, what? Uh, huh? Right. I, I will I will help you. Like, and that's the thing. I built the roadmap. It's here. Fucking go wrong with it. But again, that's that's the thing, man. People, they, they, then you start telling them. Hey, so real world is you're gonna work seven days a week, yeah. and sometimes in the beginning you're not, you're not gonna make money, the, and it, you you may not make money. For several months, but here. that's the point of owning a business. Like, like I love when people like Jeff Bezos makes too much money. I'm like, hold on, right. hold up, what? I hate Jeff that. Bezos makes too much fucking I money. Hate that. Hold on, Ugh. um, if you could see in in the past that motherfucker putting in, you know, 24 hour days sitting in a warehouse just grinding, selling books, figuring out the next big thing, working on the contract, praying That's to God him. he woke up on time to make the he meeting, stuff stop. like that. He didn't stop, bro. He, you know, he he didn't give up. The he reason always, why... What's next? Yep. What's next? That's what's the reason next? why he's successful. Not because people... And, and this is the funniest thing, because I used to work at Jones Beach, and people are like, oh my God, like I met this little... I met this... this uh, I shouldn't say little girl, younger girl, and I was, I was like 22, 23, and she was like... She must have been like 17 years old, and she goes... Oh my God! I'm gonna meet Nick Jonas. I go. That's amazing. What are you gonna do? <laughs> like deer in headlights. Sure. She had no. She. I, I never thought about it like that. Right. You have an opportunity to meet a gigantic celebrity. Right. Is your goal just to take a picture with him so you right. can be like, I met Nick Jonas. Right. Who cares? I can Photoshop me in right. with Nick Jonas. Right. We could. We could have gone to the club last night. Like, we could. I got a party with Jay Z at the Forty Forty. Right. In, in New York. Right. Nobody would know. No. You know, the beauty, of, beauty of Photoshop. What What is the purpose? Right. I'd much rather have a million Tom Francis' as friends than Nick Jonas. Right. Now, I'm not saying Nick Jonas isn't a cool guy. Oh, sure. But that's just a friendship, right? You know, right. it's like, oh my God, I get the opportunity. Right. We'll deliver. What What is your goal of this whole thing? Do you just want to shake his hand? You know, you could pay for that. I met Ray Lewis last week. I, gave, I, I fucking made sure he knew the business and he had a card. Hey man, by the way, like I do a ton of events for celebrities and shit. I do all this crap. I do blah blah blah. Here, if you ever need anything, man, take my card. After we got done smoking cigars, it was the flame. again. That's to me. That's where I'm headed. I'm not, right. I don't want the photo. I I want him to know me. Period. This is what I do. This is how I do it. He's gonna help your business. He may. He may not. Yeah, he may, he may not. Still. You got to hang yeah. out. You got to actually hang out with him. It wasn't right. like a meet and greet. Take a picture. All right, see you later. Bye. Yeah, you, like. you know, like right. I think it's so funny when people take pictures with Gary Vee. They've never even had a conversation mm. with him. They're like, oh, okay. Right. You know, they put they right. put up their peace sign like, oh, I'm with Gary Vee, and then you're out. Right. It's like okay, because you heard him speak. Well, we have this beautiful thing called YouTube, and I don't need to schlep it in New York City to go no. take that video. No. You know, it, it, it's the craziest thing in the world. You know. Maximize the time, you know, and there's probably people that do way better than Gary Vee. Gary Vee is just a public figure. Of course. You know, and Gary Vee, you know, I'm not going to hide it. And Gary Vee doesn't even run his own company. It's his brother. No, of course not, man. But yeah. again, he's, 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 he's fucking brilliant. He's again, brilliant. He, he's brilliant. He's, he's brilliant. He, again, he knows how to leverage what he has yep. into into something. And going back, to, going back to Jeff Bezos, the dude's got a gazillion fucking dollars, but he continually still says... What's next? Yeah. What's next? He's never once uh, he's never had put his hat up on the rack and said, "You know what? Right. Calling it quits, bro. Yeah. Done. Done." Right. He's still he's still about what the fuck is next, and that's the same thing, man. I'm a, uh, give me what's next. Cool. We did this thing. It's the only thing that exists in the world. We're sitting in it. We're having. I, I'm I'm done with this. I'm done. Yeah. I'll crank out a, a bunch more. Great. What is the next? Yeah. What's stop? the yeah? What's the big goal? What's the next stop? So yeah, that's uh, again. I just I just think that. Once you get there, it's you just you never stop. What is next? Yeah, it's it's got to be it's got to be that hunger for more because if you stop and you get content, you know, and I and I and, and I and I know that you've seen this, but it, it happens in restaurants all the time, right? Sure. The business owner gets content with yes, the restaurant, right? It's easy. There's a restaurant on Long Island. I'm not gonna name who they are, but they just open up another location, which is great. But their OG location is falling apart. It's it's easy. It, it, you're getting it's complacent so now. Like easy. that is the one that made you all the money. Yep. What? Yeah. I'm not saying you need to, to, to dump another, you know, to refurbish the whole place. No. Right? Redo the paint. Fix the tables. Go buy some new chairs. I know that nobody wants to pay that money. Of course. But, you know, that will be the make or break for me to go back to that restaurant. Like, 100%. ah, it's kind of gross now. It was good. Yep. It's, you know, and that's why Applebee's succeeds, right? And I hate to say it, but Applebee's succeeds because they provide a decent product. You know, it's definitely nowhere near good. No. But it's a decent product. Right. At a fair price. Yep. And the place is always clean. It's always refreshed. And that's the thing. For, you know, for me, like now, coming into March, 
I'm not rolling out the same shit. I'm refreshing the whole fucking outside. Brand new carpets. Okay, cool. So, poker. All right, yeah, I see people come pick poker. You know what? I'm putting dominoes out there now. Sure. A lot of people like fucking dominoes. I'm doing, I'm doing dominoes now. I'm doing all sorts of table games outside. I'm refreshing the experience. Yeah. You know what? Again, that's all. Pe people who have seen it and have been to it, yeah. cool. Now when they come and see me again next year, oh, shit, so you did this now. You got Jenga now. You got fucking, oh, oh, cool. So and, you, and the worst thing that happens, is, and, and the beautiful part about that is it's all cheap stuff that you could throw in your car, right? It's like, oh, dude, I thought you had poker. I don't know. I have it in my car. I just didn't right. put it out. Right. Do you guys want to play poker? Oh, right. Dude, you have poker? You look like a rock star for throwing, what, two more things in your car? A, 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 a case of chips and stuff? $40 worth of five bucks. You know, and, then, and, and you just made their night because you didn't think they had it. And then other people come in, they're like, oh, thank God, I really didn't want to play poker, but I love J I love Jango or I love right, Domino's right, or, or, right, or whatever, right, fucking right, Scrabble, right. who cares? Exactly. You know, but it's 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 that, oh, okay. I don't, it's not the same thing nope. over and over no, and over no, and over again. Once you've seen it, it's great. Again, it's, it, it, it's great. You come in here for this, but then again, to have... These different little things that you experience is, is is huge. You know, again, it's say you know same thing. Changing the cocktail menu every every six months. The cocktail menu. Shout out to the new coronavirus drink that we got happening. You know, okay, so <laughs> you, 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 you know we basically take a whiskey sour, we dump Corona on top of it. It's fucking delicious. But again, it's different. Again, it's with sure. the times. It's current. Sure. Well, you can get you know, Corona cheap now. Oh, you know, <laughs> it's apparently people think that it lives in a bottle. Oh my God! Oh, uh, hashtag America. Um, <laughs> hashtag the world we live in right now. It's it, it's just it's crazy, it right? It, it's just. So it's, so so when are you coming to Cuba with me? The fucking I, dude, you, you want to book it? I mean, dude, we, I'll, we can book it after dude, the podcast. You gotta come to Cuba. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. There's so, not even a question of when. It's oh, just, dude. I mean, so that's the question. Just so when? Okay, it's, it's, I'm it's, in. it's the same thing of like 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 we're talking about sacrifice and fear, right? For the longest time, once they open up the embargo, uh, I've always had an importer out of Switzerland that I use for our Cuban product, right? Sure. Imported. It's easy, right? It's it's not a fearful. It's it's an easy process. But I'm sure. Thinking, you know what? Why am I not going down to Cuba? And why am I not understanding the pricing down there? Why am I not bringing back my own stuff? Why am I not figuring out, you know, how the stuff is grown? Why am I? How can I better learn about the product? Sure. So, Full submersion. And again, so you know, it's the same thing. Asking questions, finding how do I get down there? Where sure. do I stay? Who, you know, what to do, what not to do? What's the right way? Who are the who are the connects? And again, same thing. You go down there, you start asking questions. Oh, you got to go see this guy. You got to go to this place. You got to go check out here. You got to you got to this. And then before you know it, I'm sitting every fucking time I go down with the hands down the best roller in Cuba. Yeah, getting the best product. Getting the best pricing, getting uh, getting shit that again that, that nobody you, could even fathom right. that you could get a hold of exactly. And now it's here, all because I asked the question of how do I do that? Yep, it's it's the it's 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 sacrifice, right? Because now you're taking time away from your family, right? There's there's same always thing. Thing. sacrifice for everything. I can't go but, in the middle of the week. I can't go on weekends because I'm busy. So I literally I have to leave fucking sometimes uh, late Sunday night, bang in into Cuba Sunday night. Stay for three, four hours on a Monday. Fucking bang out on a Monday. Get all my shit. Go. So you're and there for a couple hours. Sometimes. I'm, I'm sometimes there for hours. In that and is fucking crazy. Out. And but again, now because I figured it out, the, the pricing is better. I, instead of importing, I save almost six hundred dollars every time. Just because again, it's cheaper for me to fly, sure. book a hotel, buy the shit down there, get all the cool things that you cannot fucking get even yeah. through a wholesaler sure. in Switzerland. And bring it back here. And like the crazy part is like if you, especially with cigars, you run the risk of them not being in the right temperatures mm. and the Same. right humidity, Same. going over to another country and Same. then getting it flown back in and Same. all that kind of stuff. Same. Like you now have full control of the final product that goes into you know, and you never know who's getting on the uh, getting on this on this trail, right? You never know. Same. You never know who it is or who they're related to and how long they've been smoking cigars, and they know quite a bit about. Same you thing. Know, you know, it's it's that unknown. You do. And again, you get people that, again, you I, I've curated the list. Now that you come in, and again, if you smoke Cuban cigars exclusively, and you're a Cuban cigar head, you come in, you look at that list, you're like, that's fucking impressive. Yeah. Because I've been to Cuba, right? I, the person that comes in, oh, I've been to Cuba. I've been going to Cuba for years. I'm a Canadian. Or, you know, I've traveled sure. there. I've done church <laughs> shit, whatever the case is, right? And they go look at the list, and they're like, you can, you got this? And... Fuck yeah, I got that. Now, yeah. Again, I I have a Cohiba limited edition that's sitting in there from 2017 that if someone walks in and goes, okay, cool, so I've seen the list, what else you got? That I can break out fucking 
four or five cigars that you would be like, what the fuck? Like, how did you get a hold of these? What the fuck? So yep. and then, and so the, yeah, that's that's also the, the the really cool part as well. Yeah, it's it's full submersion in the business, but it, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's a, a good it's a good fucking time. All because you took a leap of faith. All, and, and then and then now I'm gonna turn it back on you. So again, so we we sat here two years ago, and then I look, and you know, again, same thing we talked about. You know, people get complacent. It's easy, right? To do a podcast where. A, you don't charge the client. B, I don't have to pay you anything. And B, you make uh, you make no money off of it. To then come in and see you, 130 podcasts. And it's not this cheap bullshit that we're doing for a half an hour. You, they're in-depth. We're having fun. They're really lengthy. You're asking poignant questions. Uh, kudos to you, man. Thanks, man. Fucking Appreciate kudos it. to you. Because, again, Appreciate it's the same thing. You're a sacrifice. You could do You could have been fucking at home. Fucking oh, whack yeah. it off, relaxing. Yep. Doing, uh, yep, we're here. I can't tell you how many bro. days a week what? I could just I could just stay at home. Of course, you know. Fuck. Figure See, out I have the a kid, I have a, I have a, I have, a, I have a two and a half year old son. Fucking hanging at home. Could have been hanging out with him today, relaxing. Sure. And, 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 you know, watching him grow. But dude, we're here doing a podcast. Bro. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. Yeah. It's a crazy like the opportunities that that the podcast is for. You know. But because I sacrificed, right? I had zero money in my bank account when I started this podcast. I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. Like, at least you knew about cigars. <laughs> I give you even credit about that. When right. I say I have no idea what I was doing, I mean, right. like, right? In, legitimately, in one of the episodes with my old partner, my buddy, my buddy Cam, you hear us, and I, and I know I've said this story before, but you hear me, like, messing around with the knobs, and all of a sudden, because normally we wear headphones, right. you, you hear it, and you're like, oh my god, I hear it in both ears now. Like, <laughs> like that is the level of understanding I had with right. a mixer. I, I knew... Nothing, sure. you know, and and I relied on my friends and the and the relationships that I made to have you know, hey, do you know anything about audio stuff? Yes. What can you teach me? What do I need? This is what I want to do. How do I do this? Right? Okay. This this is the nice equipment. This is the cheap equipment. Right? And right. I'm like, uh, well, I can't afford the nice equipment, so we're gonna go with the cheap equipment, uh, yeah. right? And we're gonna make this thing work. We're and jerry rig it up. Let's yeah, go. we're gonna jerry. And and the craziest part is, it's like. Not to my own horn. I have a better podcast than most people because it's in person. Like I really don't do any Zoom. I, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do that shit either. You I want to see you. I want to get the reaction. Yep. I want to. Uh, right. To do an hour and a half over a phone call. Nah, let, and let, I gotta know that person uh, to bang out an hour and a half. Yeah, fuck that. You know, so it's a struggle sometimes. But like this, we're drinking. We're drinking bourbon. We're drinking. We're smoking. We're drinking cigars. We're smoking cigars. Like we can fucking drink cigars. With <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Uh, but it's it's like that, and it's that whole learning experience. Like, you know, how am I going to do this? I have no fucking idea. But this is this is what I want to do, right? And I'm going to make it happen. And if I don't make it happen, I have learned that I cannot do that, right? And that is the that is the absolute worst case scenario. Like people are like, what if you fail? I'm like, okay, so then I sell everything that I that I bought. Uh, I make uh, you know fifty cents on the dollar that I spent on it. Um, I learned right. that I should not do podcasts. Okay. That's that's fine because now I can go through life without the regret of saying, you know, at 40, 50, 60 years old and be like, right. you know, God. what if I started a podcast right. when I was twenty years old? What right. if I, what you know, fuck, like, I can't do this anymore, like, you know, no. and, but I took advantage of it. I just said, you know what, fuck, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spend whatever money I could possibly afford, buy the equipment, start in a shoebox of a room, right? With when I say nothing, I mean. There was nothing, and I realized there was an echo. I had to learn about sound and sound reverberation and all of this kind of stuff. Like, YouTube.com, went to YouTube University, and just, how does sound work? What do I need to absorb sound? Like, this, that, and the other thing. Where's the best place to put it on the wall, right? I didn't I didn't have enough money to soundproof the whole, all the walls. I only had enough money to soundproof a small section of all the walls. And and literally, it's just been, okay, okay, I bought this. Okay, great. How do I make the show better? Put a fridge in there. Okay, how do I make the show better? Get a wine rack. Okay, how do I make the show better? Buy drinks for people, you know, and just each step is just that that learning curve. Uh, again, I couldn't couldn't agree more. It's just it's just you just you don't stop. Like that, that's and that's the thing. Like I talked to talk to so many people, and I, I talked to my wife. She goes, "Oh, well, you're done. I'm I'm never done. There's no there's no doneness." Do you think you could ever throw in the towel? No, you know, and that's the thing. Like so, so I had uh, I had a, I had a regular that comes in. He goes, "Dude, so." All right, so you're you're almost thirty seven. He goes, "What's your exit strategy?" So there is no exit strategy. Yeah. I fucking the exit strategy for me is the minute I hit the casket. That's it. Yeah. Like I like to to, to me, I just I, I I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna I'm gonna every year I'm doing something different. I'm building upon it, and that's that's it. And that's that's it. And then eventually, at at some point, 
<laughs> who the fuck knows? I just literally who all, the fuck all, knows? I, all I know is I'm I'm just riding the wave. Yep, I'm riding the wave. Yep, that's how it's how it's how it's got to be done. Hey, yeah, you could, know, could if be. you have an exit strategy, you're already. I don't want to say you're planning you guys, for failure. Yeah, yeah. Because there I, is I, a I good way to have an. Uh, there is a good thing to have an exit strategy. Right. But like you and I, we're far too young. No. You know, to, no. to throw in the towel now no. to think about that the bread and butter. No. You know, and the, and the cool part is is like. No matter where you go in life, let's just say you 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 watch you know you say you sell Long Island Cuban Scar right? right? I sell Barron Media Group. Somebody goes in and buys all my accounts, buys all my stuff, right? Sure. The marketing stuff that I learned, the cigar stuff that you learned, the bourbon stuff you learned, the the, the videography stuff I learned will be applicable forever, 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 forever. right? Forever. You know that knowledge will never go away. Right. So. You know, yeah, maybe there is an exit strategy. Or, you know, maybe I say, you know what, look, I'm going to get rid of Barry Group and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to do podcasting full time. Whatever it might be, right? right. I'm going to do videography full time. Sure. I'm going to learn more and more about that, right? Sure. Those skills are applicable forever. 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 And then, you know. Forever. So, yeah, maybe I do want to get out of the media business, but I'm never done. You know, everything sure. that I'm doing today is just building, getting to that next rung and saying, okay, well, Maybe you realize Long Island Cuban Cigar is holding you back. Or maybe right. you say, hey, I need to bring in a managing partner that's going to, you know, now I'm running corporate. Right. And he's going to run the Long Island chapter and somebody else is going to run the, you know, right. the the Connecticut chapter or whatever it is, right? It's just there's always that next step of, you know. And you would have never even, the craziest part is for people that don't own their own businesses, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll get hired in that spot one day. Which you very may, may well, but for guys like us... We're never done. Nope. You know, it's... It, I'm, There's I'm, no doneness. Yeah. I, dude, I, I have a picture on my phone, and it's and it's my bathroom mirror, right? And you're probably like, oh, it's kind of weird, right? I put a white... I put a dry erase marker in my bathroom, and my... my, my uh, I, have, I have a relatively small bathroom in my studio apartment, but the... Sometimes ideas come to me in the shower where I'm like, I, I'm not putting the phone in the shower. Nope. I'll literally get out of the shower dripping wet. So soap in my hair, and I'm like jotting notes ferociously down in the mirror. Sure. And like great example, the other morning, I'm like my girlfriend's sleeping over or whatever, and I'm yelling for her. I'm like, give me my cell phone, give me my cell phone, give me my cell phone. And she's like, I don't know where it is. I'm like, give me the fucking cell. Like I need my fucking cell phone. And I'm like, it's screwed. And I'm writing it down in the mirror. She's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I, I, I can't lose this idea. Like this idea is so important right yeah. now that I cannot lose this idea because this could be the thing that takes me to the next level. Sure. And it could come into my mind, in and out of my mind, and. Exactly. and Seconds and that's and it'll be thing, gone. Man. Like because you because you then talk to so many people because you see see so many things because you've learned so much. That's where when those little things that you do see, that's where now it all correlates because you have the knowledge. You have talked to so many people. You've seen so many things. Now you you see you see the gaps. You begin to see the gap in everything. Yep. And that's I think what is so cool about the sacrifice and then getting to this level, getting to where we are. You see, you start to see gaps and you go I can fill it and that's how you solve it that's how you solve it but it's it's that it's the craziest thank you very much brother no absolutely and that's yeah man and that's that's where the best part about all of it is and that's where I think now you when you when you start to do more and more and more and more and you get to that level you be you see more and more gaps and that's why guys like Jeff Bezos right he's at that point where he's not he's now he's built all this capital he's built all this wealth he's built all these businesses but He's so far high up. The higher you go on that ladder, the more shit on the horizon sure. that you see. The more gaps you see, and that's where you can you can. Yeah, start. can I can I make AWS warehouses? <laughs> you know, he was probably like, oh, I brought a couple <laughs> servers for my for my e-com site. Yeah, I guess we already have the staff. Sure. Why not try it out? Sure. Worst comes to worst, you fail. Right. You apologize. You give them the check back, and you say, I'm sorry, I can't deliver. And that's the best thing about failure. The the bigger you get, the more you can fail. Yeah. And that's and again, yes, the the. The, the margin for error when you're that low on the rung where you're that starting out. yeah it sucks there's a lot of error and you gotta you gotta be comfortable with that you're sure. gonna you're gonna fuck up yeah and you're especially in your you're first companies up. I mean I've started fuck up. this is probably a, I mean unofficially probably like my fourth or fifth business you're fuck up. you know oh I'm gonna start a pie company I'm gonna start a catering company like it just yep. shit falls through and you realize that it's unreasonable or it can't be done or you know it's you, you know I started out life wanting to be a chef Sure. You know, and, and like it's crazy, right? And I still, you know, I'm sure you see all my recipes I and posts on Facebook. I do. But it's it, it's funny, like which which I a lot of them I say because oh, man, when I do the food truck, 
That would be cool to do that one fucking thing, right? Let's figure out how to do that. I, I, yeah. I, say, I say a lot of your shit. It, it, it's, it's so funny, but like people are like, dude, why don't you post anything about your business? I'm like, because Facebook's not about business for me. I'm it's never going to, I'm not going to get business from Facebook. I don't, I don't share a lot of my shit. Like, I'm not one of those guys that are sharing every fucking post. I don't go on my personal Facebook and ask for business. Like, that's not, that's not what it's about. Yeah. I do that on my business page. I do that on my business, business page, Instagram, LinkedIn, like, something like that. Where right? you, could, you know, like, people yeah, are like, totally. dude, dude, but you could be missing out on so much money. I'm like, no. I'm okay with that yep. because that person is not going on Facebook to be bombarded by shit that they don't want to see. A- amen. They don't want they exactly. You know, of, uh, I'd rather provide better. hysterically funny yep. or amazing recipes where yep. people, you know. Uh, I have a, I literally have a few friends that that is all they know me for. They don't even know my company. <laughs> they literally do not know what I do to make money. Right. They just see my recipes, and every time I see them, like, dude, what's up? Like, what are you making now? Right. And I'm like, what do you mean want to make? They're like, dude, you share recipes all the time. I'm right. like, ah, you know what? I go, yes, I share them because I want to look back at them and be like, you know, I made a bomb Oreo and banana cheesecake in, in, in the wintertime, right? <laughs> and it's funny, right? I share that. I put my own little twist on it, and... My girlfriend's like, this is the stupidest thing in the world. Why are you spending $30 on cheesecake to, for all the ingredients? I'm like, no, 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 trust me. And then I bring it to the party. They're like, who, who fucking made this? Amen. Because people are going to stop and shop, right? I'm the only guy I know, and I take huge pride in this, that'll call you on your birthday. If I know your birthday or I know your cell phone number, I will call you on your birthday, which I probably owe you a couple calls. But for the most part, I will do whatever I can to make sure that I call people on their birthday. That means something to me, Right. I don't even think I actually have your cell phone number. I think we just chat through Facebook. Right. <laughs> it's just, that's just how we communicate. It's but it's like, you know, and the craziest part is, and, and I love my buddy Billy, and, and he's been on the show before, and and, uh, and this was like, this was probably the most heartwarming thing in the world, is he's, I'm like, uh, he goes, Harry, you're something else. So I go, why? What's up, man? He goes, you're literally the only friend that called me on my birthday. And I'm like, for real? He's And this happened like a while ago. I'm like, he's like, yeah. He goes, do you want who else called me on my birthday? My mom. I'm like, God damn. He goes, right. you are a real friend. Hey, hey, and so, I was like, oh, man, shit. You know what? That's it, that, that that speaks so much to me because you know what? It's it's, it's weird because we have. Like, you go you go on your Facebook. You got you got a million friends on your Facebook. You got all this. You see all you see you know their life, right? Because you see it. Yep. As you go, you you you, you feel like you intimately know them, but you really don't intimately know people anymore yeah it's you impossible know? it's too it, it, we're it, too busy we are we are too busy but it's those little it's those little innuendos that when you stop and you do make a phone call and you do do these things that now it means so much more a phone call now is like writing a note oh yeah a handwritten letter yep. of someone it literally is that significant you're with you're you're so right you're so you know right. and it's it's what the, the other crazy part is too is because i got the shit i got this idea from youtube a long time ago and uh and I was looking up, like, how to make really cool packages, right? And it was that was, like, what I wanted to do. I wanted to just, like, wrap things in packages. Like, sure. not as a business, but, like, right. something that somebody's going to remember. And I go, you sure. know what? I'm going to go, look, I'm, I'm, the last thing you want is a Christmas present for me because it's going to look like a blind person tried to fold something. <laughs> you know, a blind yeah, person same. with no feeling in their same. hands trying to wrap it. You know, same. I'm the last person you want wrapping gifts. But what I did was I got a wax seal with my initial on ah, right so now if i you know if, if i'm you know a, a wedding uh, a wedding thank you or something like that i will put it with a wax seal on I'm it drop that on someone and they're the like they're like dude you you have a wax seal i'm like yeah yeah i've had it for years what do you mean <laughs> you know and the crazy and this is the cra- this is like the ultimate crazy part my card is the only card they will still have for years to come after they've thrown out all of their thank you thank yous They'll have my card because there's a wax seal on it. Right. It's Years later, and it's and it's not even like it's hidden. It's like in plain sight. Right. Card stuffed in wax seal, and then whatever else from the wedding. And my card is always there. That's why I love this so much. This people still fucking. I mean, for a birthday, for a wedding, for something of fucking. You know, I, I don't know these people. I've I, again usually the day when I get there, I've I've talked to you maybe twice on the phone. We booked something. You paid for it. I show up. I have stuff. People again from when I first started call me, text me, Facebook me. When when I put up something, and you know I you know do a throwback when I put up their photo of their wedding. They're like, dude, people still to this fucking day. That's the only thing they talk about. Oh yeah, was this cigar lounge? Yep. They, they don't remember. Dude, we had such a fucking good time by the cigar lounge. That was such a killer add on. 
That was that dude. It was so unreal. Yeah, and the money's not even important, right? It's, it, it, you know, the money is just you're paying to create the experience, right. but the the experience and that memory oh. sits and I'll part forever. forever, 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 like, forever, forever. And like, like to me, that's why, like, uh, again, any any event like that, I just. I'm uh, anything I do, anything bullshit. Like again, doing an Islander game. Yeah. We had a, I had a, I had a bunch of uh, folks from Canada come in. Big Islander fans. They haven't been to an Islander game ever, right? This is their first Islander game, and literally they, they said they saw me from a Facebook group for the Islanders. That they someone posted something. I was at a random game, and they're like, they messaged me like, "Hey, you're gonna be here for this game." And they came, and they were just the whole time fucking blown away. They're like, dude, we're talking about everybody in Canada about this shit. <laughs> you know, like, you and, need to have somebody in Canada doing this right now. Right? Like, it, You probably just, need a little more insulation, though. <laughs> a little, it's a little, little bit. Cold we, would have to, we would have to figure it out. Uh, but yeah, they were, I mean, <laughs> man. Uh, it's, it's shit like that, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's those little moments, those little, that little extra something. And the money isn't even important nah. at that point. Like, nah. Because it, it means so much to you later on. Mm-hmm. Like, like you're like, oh, you know, like, yeah, they help you build your business, right? right. Like, I've had people reach out to me separately right. who I didn't even know listen to the podcast. They're like, dude, just want to let you know your podcast has literally changed my life. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I just do, I do this for fun. Like, this right. is this is what I do enjoy right. doing. I love meeting people. I love talking to people. Right. And they're like, dude, every time I listen to your podcast, I always learn something. You have the most amazing guests. I learn so much about you. I learn so much about your guests. I learn so much about what's out there. It's not everybody gets to do this. No. And, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like... I'm indirect. Like, that was part of the reason why I started it. Right. And the other part of it is I wanted to learn, but it was just like... Sure. It's like, it hits you in like a it different... Does. You know, there's no money attached to this, yeah. but no. it, it just it hits you in the most incredible way possible. Most incredible way possible. Without a fucking doubt. Without way Oh, my like, God. Like, without a doubt. And it's... Man, and at the end of the day, like... You, we take none of this with, with us when we go. No. Right? Like, none of it. We don't... We don't, This doesn't come where... Whatever happens is... None of this comes with us. So, to me, it's just all these memories and all these things that you learn and all these things that you can sort of pass on to people. I think that's that's the best part of it. Yeah. It's the best, best fucking part of it, man. Yep. You know? It's, it's, dude, it's the craziest thing in the world. It's the craziest thing in the world. Like, this whole journey that you're on and I'm on, and, like, I, I, I don't think that time is... Lim- like, everybody has their own timeline. They all intersect and they like them and stuff. But it's just, it's the craziest thing. You know, like, oh, dude, have you ever heard of Long Island Cuban Cigar Burger and I'm like, oh, yeah, Tom's a cool dude. Do you, do you want to reach out to him? They're like, wait, you know him? Oh, yeah. He was on my podcast. We hung out. We, we had cigars. We had bourbon. I've seen you have a variety of fucking events. So we've been at, you know, yeah. fucking Simplay. Oh, my God, yeah. There, a ton of there. events. I mean, dude. We've been... it, it's just, it's the craziest thing. And they're like, oh, my God. Uh, like, yeah. Like, all it takes is just... A little bit of sacrifice. Is it? And here's the crazy part. Everybody thinks it's like takes this much work. It's usually like this much work. It's, nice. it's get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yep. Yep. And give it's some cra- shit. Crazy shit. Give some shit. So what is next for you, man? So again, you, you know, again, I so you got you got the whole media group. You're doing all these things, man. You got the fucking podcast. What's fucking next for you, man? So uh, for, for, so I've had an employee now. He's been with me for a while. He's starting uh, officially full time in April. Nice. And whatever little money fairy is in the air that keeps sprinkling opportunities and deals all over me. That's fair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I, I really, it's actually kind of crazy. I really don't know, um, because I'm like getting to the point where I, I didn't think was possible. Like, you know, you start a cup, you start a company, you're like, I'm gonna stick all my time, energy, and effort into this thing, and I don't right. know what the fuck's gonna happen. Right. You know, so I'm in that position now where I'm like, oh my god, like everything that I've ever worked for is like coming together, like yep. hiring a full timer, deals are closing, I'm making more money than I ever have made before, like it's all coming together, and I'm like, you know, and that's part of one of my things is like, okay, well, either I'm gonna take the company and run with it and just keep growing, right? Um, I might get involved in other business ventures and just you know keep running the company also, and sure. you know who knows? Like, it's just the world is is my oyster. Like a little, like I want to do road trips and stuff like that, and I'm a big fan of traveling the country right. and, and even the world. Um, but it's like. I, I don't even know what's next. Like right. I want to, you know, I want to open up a coffee shop. I don't want to tell my idea on here because I don't want somebody to steal this idea. Shut but um, I'll discuss with you afterwards. But like that's something else I want to do in another state and start doing that. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe this is another option, right? So right. it's like, okay, I, I I had irons in the fire. They're all hot enough to forge now. So I'm starting to forge some of them. And then that's great. Man. It's like, okay, iron out. 
new iron in. Let's yep. see what happens. Yep. You know, it's got to get hot. It's got to boil around in my brain, and who knows? It might come out, and uh, it might not. It might have gotten too hot. And now the metal's shot. You know, and if I pull it out at the right opportunity and hit it with a hit it with a mallet, it'll change into something else. Right. You know, so future for me, I, I don't really know, but like. Uh, everything has been going swimmingly well lately. It's just the weirdest shit in the world. That's it. Uh, that's that's great. And uh, you know, I think that's I think that's important too. It's like you gotta you gotta keep doing new shit. Just well, I mean, whatever it is. I mean, doing new shit. Like so, for me, a lot of what I what I've been you know thinking about is again doing you know partner up with you know you like hey man. So why don't like once a month we try to find a guest. We bring them in here. We bring this down here, and you know, oh, we, yeah. do, we do a cigar and bourbon podcast. You know, sure. like where we just again same, you know, same thing. I bring in an in, in influential bourbon guy, uh, uh, yeah, man, I'm cigar in. guy. I'm you in. know, and that's the like, beauty of this. Like, we're gonna end the show, and you're gonna be like, dude, I, I got an idea. Let's can we try this? Right? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Let's let's do it. I'm right. in. I know when. What the fuck else is going yeah. on? Wednesday like, I just I just agreed to go to Cuba. I've literally never been to Cuba before. And you're like, dude, when are you coming? Right. I know that I'm going now. Like, there is no doubt in my mind of of going. It's just a matter of getting it on the calendar. Okay, May, June, July, August. Good times to go. I, whether or not that's a good time for you, but we'll yep. figure that out, right? Oh, yeah. And, and like, I'm in the position now where I can say yes to those things. And sure. it's, you know, I love when people say, like, oh, you're lucky. That's the fuck. I... Oh, that boils my blood. They're like, hey, oh, you're so lucky. That... <laughs> I don't know any entrepreneur I... that likes that word ever. I... I've literally never met anyone there that's like. no luck. There's there no luck. No Luck. Meeting Ray Lewis in Cuba, that's luck. Yeah. Right? That's, yep. but, uh, but again, but even to still, get it's not to l- that point. Exactly. To exactly. get to the, I had to have gotten there still and had known Alex and have understood that where his shop was and who he was and how I can make a connection with him. Uh, right. It's so like, still. It, it, it's just like the doors of opportunities are just all opening. Like, and you're like, oh my God, what do, you know, I'm, I'm what are you my head in here. Do I want this? No. Okay. Do what I want this? No. Okay, great. Do I want this? Oh, this is something I might have. Okay. What about this door? Oh, this is a good one. This is something I might want to get involved in. What are you willing to give up? You know, but, but then it's like people are like, oh, you know, like, and I've, and thankfully I have a really, like, it's, it's crazy too, because, and I don't know if you experienced this, but in the beginning, I had a lot of people that doubted me. Like a tremendous, they're like, dude, just stick with your job. Don't, don't fucking get involved with this shit. Right. You know, and I'm, you know, now I'm like, thank God. Like, thank God. And people are like, oh, you know, like you could drive by my office. Right. At 11 o'clock and I almost guarantee you my car will be here. Right. I may not be working directly on the business or in the business. Right. I might even be playing a video game. Right. But. That video game is me shooting ideas around friends and then, me, you know, oh, dude, what did you think about this? Oh, I didn't think about that. Right. Or, hey, have you checked out this person's YouTube channel, right? One of my, one of my, pod, uh, what was a podcast guest, met him through my fraternity that I didn't even really want to sign up for because I didn't have the time to dedicate to the fraternity that, you know, frat guys have. Right. And, you know, I had a full-time girlfriend and, and had a real job and stuff like that in college and literally said yes, developed a bunch of good relationships with people. And then it was like, oh, by the way, my dad was on Shark Tank. I'm like, what? Your dad was on Shark Tank? Oh, yeah. Wow. And, and more crazy stuff, right? So, Polly Glad, I shout out to my buddy, uh, to Jim. And Jim? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, my dad needs help with digital marketing. By the way, can you, you know, can you help him with it? Mm-hmm. Y- yeah, I can, I can try. Like, I, I don't know where this is going to go. But, right. yeah. You know, oh, by the way, you know, coaching him, consulting him on his website, this, that, and the other thing. Hey, by the way, check out this guy, Miles. And Miles is going to be a future guest now. And I'm like, who's this guy, Miles? He's I was like, dude, he's the mas- He's like a master marketer. I'm like, okay, sounds great. Like, I'll shit, I'll consume his stuff, right? And you know, then it then it started. Now I started watching him, and I'm like, oh, this guy's on some next level stuff. I right. can learn a ton of knowledge from him, right? right? I'm just gonna watch him religiously, right? Learn from him, right? Now, you know, join Miles is like inner circle, right? So now I'm part of him. Now I talk to him on a somewhat re- regular basis. So we're gonna do a podcast together, and it's like, oh my god, I had to meet. I had to start my own business. Grind for a hundred hours a week for a year and change to fa- to get this client for them to know what I'm doing because I didn't have my business when I first right. met these guys for them to know what I'm doing to then you know have him show me his stuff then for me to be sold on his stuff to go buy his stuff to then have him you know to have him as a future guest on the show it's right. like no so I would have never had him on the show otherwise but because I went through this whole series of of getting rejected and getting declined and grinding and figuring out new angles to take it this that and the other thing. To get to that point, to now be able to speak to him, to have him on my show, 
And who knows where that's going to lead? Who knows? Like, that's the craziest Ooh, thing in the world. Fuck. No. So, like, it's that rung, right? Okay, I know. I can see what I can see now, but maybe he's like, dude, I, I believe, you know, who knows what'll happen? He could be like, hey, you got to go check out this guy. He's going to help you blow up your podcast, right? Totally free. You had me on the show. I loved it. Go talk to this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go talk to him. Right. I go talk to him. And, and who knows where it's going to go from there? Like, that's the beauty of what we do. And again, going back to the whole lucky thing. I mean, it's just, again, I was freshly married. I just had my fucking son. And I literally am like, dude, I'm doing this. And people are like, dude, what the fuck you doing? You have a kid. Stop. Don't. What? You spend all this money. Yep. It's great. And, that, and now... And now it's you know, it's not even so much proving people wrong. It's just it's proving yourself right. Yep. I think is more I think it's more satisfying than anything because now again I I I, I have something that literally I have bookings into 2023. Oh my I have, you god. Know, you know, weddings and shit like I mean I have things that I had doors open that I never would imagine before and it you just go back and you're like thank thank God right yeah I worked a hundred hours a week thank mm-hmm. God I went to all those. Think I'd be saying yes to the opportunity. Yes, like, yes to everything. Hey, yes dude, we'd love to say do this. Yes. Yeah, free, let's do it. If fuck it's it. Shitty. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Just go. Fuck. Just do it. Work. Work. Work your process. And the, and the craziest work, part work, is work, like work, work, work. for me, and, and and this is probably something that most people have, and I know that you understand this, but you know, it's not about the the end goal, right? I want to have a Lamborghini. Like my goal Good, is to own Lamborghini. Dude, like, I want to I want to have a cool ass car, right? Yeah, sure. sure. You know, that's my that's my dream car, right? But like, it, it's not about that. It's the adventure to get it. If somebody just handed me the keys to it, I'd be like, this is cool, but like, this isn't as cool as me working towards it. Like, this is not nearly as cool as like the grind to get there and the phone call that I picked up and made and. You know, because there's business that comes in, and you're like, I don't really right. want that business. But right. then, you know, like, dude, please don't really help me out so much. And then you're like, like in the beginning, right? You're like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a loss on going to a soccer game, right? And then you're like, okay, I went there. And then, sure enough, a month later, he's like, dude, I'm having my bachelor party. Can you can you set up at my house or whatever it is? And you're like, all right, cool. And then you don't even know that he's related to a celebrity or the owner of, you know, a major company on Long Island. It's like, hey, dude, I want to have a party at my office and, you know, all my, all my friends are going to come and, and I want to introduce you to them. And you're like... Uh, literally out of a free soccer game. Seriously, and I, I, I have to, I have to look up the guy's name because it's gonna fucking drive me crazy. I've been trying to think of it the whole time, and it's simply like it's, it's also timing too, right? All time, all time. Well, what the fuck, the fuck is his name? It's gonna piss me the fuck off. God damn. The soccer guy? No, the oh. the, the, the <laughs> Long Island musician. Or did the party for John Bellion? Thank God, John Bellion. Oh wow! He, right, that's sick. Huge, and it's all because. Right? My neighbor, Mike, fucking love you. I make sure I tag you on this because I fucking love you, man. He says hello all the time. He's the best neighbor on the fucking planet. So I had this guy in the middle of February when I first started the business call me out of nowhere. And he goes, hey, man, uh, I've seen your cigar and bourbon thing. Uh, I, I, I want to book it for my engagement party. So, sure, man. So I give him the price. And he goes, no, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, okay. He goes, I need your best Cuban cigars. I need fucking open bourbon bar. I need fight all the shit, and you and you're just in the background, really silent, like tabbing us all up. Like, all right, man. So it's gonna be about, uh, looks like about five grand. Cool, man. Can I give you my credit card now? Sure. So you take take the credit card. Awesome. Says his name, a hey, John Bellion. I, oh, he I, called you. Right. He called oh, me. Oh, he's too. the one that called he me. He called me Holy directly. Holy shit. So, but again, I don't fucking know who this guy is. Right. right. So sure enough, I booked I, I booked the party. My cousin Matt, who's huge into music, he does a bunch of shit. He's got he does like music for like TV shows and shit sure. like that. So, wind up getting close to the party. I, I told my cousin, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing a party for John Belling. He lost his fucking mind. He goes, you know who that is? He goes, dude, he's like the big, he's like the biggest, the hottest musician going right now. He just released his all his sure his all his time song, love. all time love. Yeah. That's like what I mean. like. Who the fuck, all time love. I don't even fucking. Oh, remember. that makes sense. So. He lives. He lives over in Smithtown. Sure, sure. You still talk to him? Yeah, I talk to him every every once in a blue moon. Uh, but again, <laughs> got to mention the podcast. It's, it's, it's I got to be like, shit. dude, I know this kid has a podcast. Dude, you got to find. Come on, right? Like, <laughs> but he uh, did a party for John fucking Bellion, and all due to my neighbor just you know seeing me, understanding what I do, it, and he's and related, he's related, yeah, with John Bellion, and off and away. It's shit like that, man. It's um, 
you know, things like that. It's the world is so interconnected. You just got to keep working your shit because you never know who the one fucking person you meet who opens that next door for you. It's, it's you, the craziest thing in the world. If you don't do that shitty fucking charity event or that thing where you're like, dude, I've done some casino nights. Oh, yeah, there's going to be 100 people there. You get there, there's 20 people. But I meet this one guy who's like, dude, you got to do this corporate event together. So now you're doing this big paid corporate event. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it, dude, it's so weird how the universe it's works. And, it, then, it and then the craziest part, like, so I was visiting my buddy. He, he uh, I, I, I'm not going to say... I could say his name. So, uh, works at a very nice jewelry store in Manhattan. We'll just leave it at that, right? Okay. Uh, my buddy Anthony Kozlowski. And super swell dude. Works at a high-end jewelry store in Manhattan. That leaves a lot of uh, room. And all the, I'm sitting on the... I'm, I'm leaning on the glass with hundreds of thousands of dollars with the watches. Sure. Right? Puts a watch on me the other day. I don't know if you saw it. And uh, I'm like, oh, it's a cool watch. You know, and I knew it wasn't going to be cheap. I'm like, what, what is course. this? Th yeah, I'm like, what is this thing on? He's like, oh, 160. I'm like, I'm wearing literally somebody's <sighs> mortgage on my <laughs> wrist right now. Now, granted, I'm not buying this thing. No, so great. for anyone that's thinking. Right. And um, so, at, we, you know, we go through the whole thing. I, I wore $300,000 of the watches that Jesus day. Just, just trying it on. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Blows this is crazy. Blows your way. Blows me away. And uh, so whatever, we're shooting the shit. And... Uh, so and I don't know celebrities. Like I literally, Same if John Bell, if John Bell walked in, I might, might know who he who, is. Now, now I would know, but yeah. but yeah, before, yeah. I don't and uh, so we're sitting there shooting the shit. I got my arm on, arm on the case, and uh, so these guys walk in. I'm like, they look like average guys. You know, no, there's nothing crazy. And that's sure. that's sure. the thing that people don't understand. It's like famous people and rich okay. people all are human too. No, oh, super, and, super, super, super human. And uh, so he's like, he's with the, one of his buddies, and he's, he's like, you know, looking in the case. I was like, oh, sorry, dude. Like I'm in the way. Like whatever. Just like. I would have, I, even if I was buying, I would have done the exact same thing. Right. Like, I would have been like, no, 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 I'm too good. Like, no, no, like, take a look. You know, you never know what you're going to like. Right. So, he's like, my buddy's like, dude, do you know who that is? I'm like, I literally have no idea who that is. I, you know, hey, man, what's up? How are you? You know, I, no clue. Right. No clue. Right. He goes, oh, that's one of the Islanders players. One of the, like, the star Islanders players. And I'm like, okay. Like, Right. Like, for me, like, celebrities right. don't, like, they don't get me, like, jazzed up. I am, right. I but it's just, it, I'm like, wow, it's like, cool. Cool. It's cool. that's so cool that, it's like, cool. he comes in, super average dude, got his hoodie over his arm, like, he's not walking around with a posse. Right. It's just him, and I'm like, wow, right. this is like, he's looking at thousands and, you know, millions of dollars worth of watches. Right. Swell dude, like, just had a positive encounter with him. Oh, I would never say anything negative. No. If I, somebody was like, oh, that guy's a dick, I'd be like, ah, oh, that's definitely not true, because he was very, like, right. oh, dude, dude, don't worry about it. Stay, stay, stay. I'm like. No idea who the guy was. Zero. Like, that's the coolest thing in the world. The coolest thing in the world. It's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I, do, uh, I do a ton, ton of Islanders events. I do their charity casino outing. I do their golf outing. When I first started, uh, I had uh, the coach, uh, the older coach, Doug Wait. Uh, he was like two coaches ago. Um, came, again, came in. We were smoking cigars, hanging out. You would have never known, man. He's millions of dollars, played in the NHL. Oh, the fucking coolest guy, man. And again, would would I know? I had no idea who he was. No and, idea. That's the coolest part. When it's, he walks out, he leaves. Hey man, he bought a bunch of cigars. He left. Someone's like, dude, that was Doug fucking Wait. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> cool dude, like cigars. <laughs> only only Wait I know is fucking right here, man. That's it. You know, that's it. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's a crazy experience. And like the cool, the cool part is like, shit, dude. you know. I would have never been in that jewelry And granted, I didn't like meet him, meet him, and like right. hang out, talk to him. But like, right. I would have never been in that situation if I didn't bunker up with John. Who I, and I didn't bar. Like, it's crazy, right? It started out with bartending, right? Met my buddy John in there, and you know, hey, start your start your studio in here, right? And then and then took the leap of faith, started my own company, and could go there in the middle of the day, right? Happen to be in the area for another client, go there in the middle of the day to just see him. Like, not that I care, I could you know care less about that, but it right. was just like. All of these things had to happen. The, the hundreds of hours of work I had to put in just for the opportunity to be there to exchange words with him is the coolest thing. And that's how the world, and like, that's how the world works. That's that, that's how it works. And again, it's, it's just, it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. What are you going to give up to, to get there? Yep. It's, it's going to cost you a, a relationship or two. It's going to cost you your time. It's gonna, it's gonna, you're going to put some shit on the back burner. But again, if you're going to, you're willing to give shit up you're gonna get there. Yeah, you make it. You make it you happen. You will. You will. I promise you. You will. You just. You got. You got to sacrifice. And you're gonna sacrifice a lot, a fucking lot, a lot, a lot. You're gonna time, money. You again, relationships. Uh, all, all that shit. But when, when you get, when you get to this point yeah. where you and I are, now you sit here and you go, all right, cool. Well, now I can say what's next. Yep. Now I can say, okay, cool. It's not because I was lucky. It's not because I was handed opportunities. It's because 
we gave shit up. Yep. Yeah, you got you got to give it up. Yeah, you got you got to give it up. Like have to. This, you know, I couldn't afford when you know now now I can you know afford the stuff, but like I couldn't afford the camera. I couldn't afford this. I couldn't afford this. You know, and each step was like you know. It was, hey, can I borrow somebody's camera? Right. Like, you know, hey, I don't have the lens I need to shoot, get that shot. Going to John or going to a friend, hey, can I borrow a lens for my camera? Can I borrow your camera? Like, I'll, right. if I break it, I'll buy it. You know, I'll figure out how to pay that shit back or whatever it is. Right. I'll take out a loan. But I need the opp- I need to get it to get the opportunity to go there to go do the job. Totally. You yeah. Know? Like, uh, again, I have a 30-year-old scotch chat out there. So it's, it's almost a $2,000 bottle. Again, I-, I laugh in the beginning because there's no way I would ever have that. No, oh yeah, you couldn't even wrap your head no, around. No, three hundred dollar bottle of bourbon that we're drinking right now. You know, it's just it's you get to me. It's now I've gotten to that point because again, in the beginning, was willing to give that shit up. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing. The journey that like so it's it's that you go through. Again, now like now we're sometimes just, just you get in waves. Like when you start talking to someone, we start. I start doing this. Yeah, I do a bunch of podcasts now. I just did a golf podcast and like you oh, sit cool. here. Yeah, you just sit here. It's just waves. <laughs> And it, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's truly crazy. It's a journey. It's like, and my favorite thing about like podcasts too is it's like, I don't want to say it's history, but it's a record of like what you've done. Right. Like, you yes. Know, my old, like if I get one thing out of the podcast, regardless of business or friendships or anything like that, right. you know, if I have kids one day, right. You know, Hey dad, what did you it's, do? It's memories. You know? And I'm fortunate, like, I'm 27. I haven't had a real job in two years. Like, that's the craziest part. Like, my friends go to work, and I'm like, well, uh, first of all, work's a joke. You work 40 hours a week, you're blessed. That, and you can make ends meet, you're hey, blessed. Especially in fucking New York. Amen. Yeah. You, you are doing fucking good. Man. Amen. Amen to but you. But, like, Amen to you. it's the craziest thing because it's it's just this whole series of shit that happens. And then now I get that, you know. You know what did I do at twenty? You know twenty five. What did I do at twenty? And where was I at twenty six? Because I know that I talk about my business all the time on the show. Like, you know, oh my god, did I get that deal? I don't know. Did I get that deal? Oh, I did get that deal. <laughs> and then that led to this. And then that yeah. led to led to this. And, mm-hmm. and you know, and then it like spider webs off. And, and now it's you know now I have a whole list of shit that like, you know. Like the, I think the funniest thing, and this is the coolest thing, was when somebody showed me Rogue, and I listened to a bunch of his episodes. Oh God, and, great. But like, I scroll back to episode one. I'm like, episode one was garbage. It was, was shit. Shit. It was shit. I look back at the trailer when I when I, I look back at photos again. Like I said, I had I had, and I was bullshitting. I may, maybe had twenty bottles now. I got thirty from bourbons and scotches. I look back and I, I fucking laugh. I'm like, man, I was that was kind of a joke in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but like. You know, people bought it. They liked it. They, you know. Sure, they, they they get it. They can see it, and then you just again, you just just what's next? Like, cool. So fifty bourbon and scotches. Okay, cool. Uh, Seventy five is cool. Hundred. I want. I want. I want fucking one hundred and fifty oh, bourbon yeah. and scotches. Oh, yeah, you want a library? A oh, library. come to my private cellar. Right. Instead of a menu, I want to hand you a fucking book yep. when you walk in there. Here's here's our whiskey book. Yeah, pick out the <laughs> twenty bourbons that you want. Right. Plus, we'll bring whatever else. Like, right. here's a specialty. Here's a book. Yeah. That's, like I want, like I think like, that's the level I want to get to. Like you want, here's the fucking book. Like, it's not here's even, the it's fucking not, book. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a list. It's not a menu. Here's the book. Like, <laughs> uh, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. So what? So so now that now that we now that we're so much further ahead than where we were two years yes. ago. Why bourbon and why Cuban cigars? Cool. So, for me, that was my wheelhouse in the beginning. Right, I wanted to come up with something that. A resonated with people, mm-hmm. and B that was again real Americana. Sure. So when, when, whenever you talk about having a good cigar and having a good drink, generally nine times out of ten you're having a cigar and you're having bourbon, mm-hmm. right? That's the world I understood. And as you graduate and as you begin doing those things, people like all different types of shit. Sure, why not the door? Um, so people do all types of different shit. Sure. Between it's not just a cigar and bourbon; it's a cigar and scotch. It's a cigar and Irish whiskey. Sure. It's a cigar and Cuban rum. Sure. Um, so that's where you begin to sort of graduate. So when you walk in, people go, oh, Cuban cigar and bourbon experience. But you walk in, you go, wait a minute. You got a shit ton of scotch in here. Fuck yeah, dude. I, I, yeah. There's 40 different scotches in here. Sure. But, so what do you have for Irish whiskey? Well, I used to just have red breast. Now I got a, a red breast 12 all the way up to a 27 year <laughs> red, green, and yellow spot, red spot. Uh, I mean, uh, you want to get, again, Cuban rum. People get blown away. You got fucking Cuban rum in here? Sure. Hell yeah. So that's where 
Um, you know, now it's morphed into something so much larger. Sure. So much fucking larger. But yeah, when you, the essence of it, again, when you're smoking a cigar, you, it's all about not so much balance, but things that are, again, the antithesis of each other. Sure. If I'm having a mild cigar, I'm going to want a stronger drink because, again, I want to be able to taste that mildness of the cigar, then have that bourbon or scotch sure. or whatever it is come out and wash that away. So every time you're getting, not getting the same hit of the same thing, but they're washing each sure, other. Sure, like out. this, like this is like. Oh, God. You, you sip this, and it's like. Oh, especially with the cigar. That was oh, a great combination, by the way. Thanks. But it's like, it's crazy. Like, you, you smoke the cigar, and you're like, oh my God, like you actually taste it. And, you know, kudos to you, because I, you know, I consider myself a cigar smoker, but I didn't know what I was buying. I mean, I still barely know what I'm buying, but now I'm like, okay, I know what a mid, I know what a mild is, I know what a, like, a, a, bold, a, a, right? yeah, a bold, and like, all, you know, what's a blend and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is what I like. And like the way you had it laid out, like creamy smoke, this, like mild flavor. And when, I, you know, and the, and this sticks with me forever is you're like, when you have a good cigar, you should wake up the next day and be like, yep, did nothing. I have a cigar? Nothing. nothing. You know, that's the craziest part. And then like you get, you get this, this is bourbon. Bourbon. You get this bourbon that like, right. it's not <laughs> overpowered, but it's like, it's like a five gum commercial. Oh right, yes. It's, it's <laughs> like it's like you're yes. standing there right. and your taste buds are just and you're like you're, you're, you're in the bees. Yeah, and you're like that, that commercial. That's is exactly what this yes. is like. And yep. you're like, oh my god! Like right. now I have this delicious cigar. I have this phenomenal bourbon, and like they play off each other. Like you sip the bourbon, and you're like you feel it, and like. And this is this is like next level stuff. Like this is not what you're getting at like a forty dollar <laughs> bottle in, in your liquor store, right? This is like rushes over your palate. You feel it like from the back of your throat oh. to the tip of your tongue. You get the sweetness. You get the age. And then you compliments with the cigar and and now and it's just it's just, it really is an experience. Yeah, it it's just that was an experience with, without a doubt. And that's where again people walk in and they the not you're just blown away by. Dude, this is the fucking coolest shit I've ever seen. Sure. But now I'm going to fucking wow you with what the shit we have in here. Yep. And again, it is it is a ton of shit. It, it, again, it just... When when I go out and travel, like I want to go to the creme de la creme shit. Because again, I have the creme de la creme shit. Yeah, right? yeah. So the thing is now, like I, I'm i on the measuring stick right, to where I go. Yep. Yep. So if your bar can't fucking outdo my bar, I, I ain't go. going to your bar. Yep. Yep. I ain't going. I'm, yep. not, I'm not going... To your local shit bar, where they, again they have on the counter Maker's Mark and Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah, it's not your thing. Because again, it's it's I'm the measuring stick. So when you come here, again, if if I've set the bar for you, sure, that's where I'm looking for every time. I've set the bar for you for every time that now you walk in and go, dude, the guy in the shit trailer has more shit than you. Then no, that's not. That's so so. Now I'm trying to be a measuring stick. And that's where... Oh, look, my you do a great job. Should we do, should we do another little taste well, of something? Well, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to continue to blow you away. So, oh, look, I'm not, so not going to say no. Was, that was, I'm not going to say that no. That was Blanton's gold, shit that you can't get. Now, that's shit that you can get, but shit that you'll never find. So let's talk about Kentucky Owl. Kentucky Owl makes... So we can go for a couple hours. I'm good oh, for a couple yeah. hours. I so. mean, absolutely. So, so Kentucky Owl uh, is one of the... Uh, you know, Again, higher end bourbons. They make a rye as well. The rye is fucking phenomenal, but uh, their bourbon is super elusive. Forget the fucking Pappy Van Winkles. They they're, they're great, but that shit's a little overrated now because it's gotten so expensive. Sure. Again, about a four hundred dollar bottle, which you will you just won't fucking find. Sure. You won't fucking. It's the find exclusivity it. and the uh, rareness. It, of yeah, it. It, it really is. Do you ever hit your head on that thing? I'm sorry. Do you ever hit your head on that thing? Yes. Oh, oh plenty of times. Plenty of times. <laughs> Uh, put all the drinks up there, shots. We have fucking sure. fun. But, dude, all the time when I'm back and forth for Russia, I fucking whack my head on it all the time. Uh, but Kentucky Owl, uh, they come out with a batch every year. And, uh, again, it's 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 outrageous shit. And, again, shit that you just, you, you won't find it. So, you won't, uh, obviously, you've got a guy that, that can get this stuff. Yeah, so, that's that's the thing, man. You, so, yeah. how do, so, here's a question for you. Sure. How do regular Joe Schmoes who like bourbon, or like we'll call them enthusiasts, how do they even find out about this? Uh, you have to you have you have to come here. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Look, seriously, I'm... or else you're doing a ton of research online. You 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 know your craft. You're going down in Kentucky. You're doing shit like that because, or else you would just never you would never fucking know. The world is huge sure. and really elusive when it comes to bourbon because of the bourbon boom. Sure, it's so impossible to find a lot of this sure. shit, man. Cheers, brother. Hey, salute. This is red as could be. Oh. Like I'm gonna. Oh. We'll just hold that up. Yeah, for that's right yeah, there. that is red as could be. That's, fine. that's deep. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. So, this is bottled at 120 proof. Now, it drinks closer to probably 110 proof. But, the flavor, the burn, oh my god. the nose, it just... The finish, even the finish... It's like... Continues on with you. Yeah. It's like... It's like a... It hits you like a five gun commercial. <laughs> and it retracts like... Like a slow-moving, meandering river of, oh. like, the Mississippi. Just, it, it's, it starts in the beginning, ends in the back, and you feel it hit the whole way and retract the whole way. It's That's like, how I feel right it's now. It's like when you've had a long day. It's hot and cold outside. It's 19 degrees. You finally get in your house, take off your clothes, and you need to long day, and you get into your bed, and you pull the covers over you. Yeah. It's exactly that's, what it is. That's 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 what that is. Yeah. That's what that is. Oh my god. And that's and that's again that's the good quality shit that I mean man you just you drink that and you're like you $50 a glass is fucking worth it. Oh it's, yeah. Wow, man. And you just you savor it. You sip and you savor it and there's nothing fucking better. It's, I like feel guilty drinking this. I'm like this no. is like but this is what this is what we do. And that's, this is what that's it's for. the shit. That's the shit that we provide. Yeah, granted, the guy wants to come in, get a Jack and Coke, hey man, good on you. That's what you drink, great. But for the guy that comes in and goes, dude, what's different? Sure, sure. I can, I can, I can take it in any avenue. And that's, that's and again, it's the same thing. Starting off, I didn't, I, I didn't know about Kentucky L. Same thing. And again, as you learn, as you meet people who come in, dude, I'm, a, I'm a distributor for Mictors. You got to try this, dude. Oh, because yeah, they I, can get the. Uh, I've been, I've been down, show. I've been down to fucking Kentucky, dude. You got, you got to see, you got to see this. You know, following the industry hard, and then seeing the crazy releases and the Facebook groups, and that's the thing. You're doing a ton of research, right? Yeah, on your that's own. It, that's it. You're watching other people. Uh -huh. You're seeing all these things again. It continues to open the world to you. So, yeah. Cheers, brother. Salud, baby. It just, this nice, quiet moment where you just. You'd enjoy all those flavors. There's so much. <sighs> the complexity of it. That's so that's where that's where the bourbon world really I think endears itself to everyone. Because a scotch a scotch will a scotch will provide that to you, but it's not scotch doesn't get super complex like that. It sure. gets complex enough, but scotch is clean. Scotch in the very beginning is meant to be clean. Sure. You. It's smooth. When everyone describes a really good scotch, it's smooth. Sure. There's good flavor to it. Uh, you, you know, but it's never as complex as bourbon. Bourbon sure. hits you in so many different ways, from the burn to the caramel, the toffee, to all of a sudden the butterscotch. Oh, holy shit, there's all the wood. And, oh, yeah, right? dude. And, oh, and, and man, the finish continues on. That's where a great bourbon, man, can't fucking beat it. That's crazy. You can't fucking beat it. This is the craziest it. thing I've... This, <laughs> this is literally... Yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. So this is batch nine. Uh, batch eight was pretty decent. Um, it wasn't as... Now, how many bottles do they produce in a batch? So, I mean, so this, I think, is so... You usually have it on here. I don't... So, here you go. So, bottle 8,072 of 11,000 bottles. Of that of series. This, of this. Period. That's all they make for the year. God damn. 11,000 bottles. That's it. So... For anyone that thinks 11,000 is a lot, just remember there's 330 million-ish people in the United right. States. Right, and then plus people internationally come and they buy the yep. shit. Yep. They try to find That's it. That's it. There's it, So that's what makes it not only so rare, but they put so much time and effort into making that quality product. Sure. End of story. That's insane. That's insane. Now, have you been to any of these distilleries and stuff like that? Sure, man. So that's so now that's, that's where I'm trying to also take the next level. So I'm trying to etch out time... Like in my off season, like so, I just went went to Nashville. Uh, I visited a few of their not only distilleries down there, uh, Bell Bell Mead, fucking phenomenal. They're great, great, great distillery. Uh, but I try to go to these higher end whiskey bars. I try to find these closet places that have shit, sort of like I do. Like, all right, cool. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. What do I you have? I don't want the mainstream. What's so? If you deep dive on my Instagram, like about a week ago, uh, I went to Husk. In Nashville, uh, one of the older like bourbon bars down there. Sure. Same thing. I, I go down there. Cool man. I see what you have on there. You can see they have some decent shit on the shelves. Hey, so what do you have that's not on the shelf? I always ask questions. So what do you do? You have anything that's not on the shelf? Yeah. So they literally go in the corner. There's like almost a humidor looking sure. cabinet 
They open it up. They have a 23-year-old Willet bourbon. Now, Willet, uh, they make this cool pot still bourbon, sure. which is which is decent. But again, it's like a lower-end maker's mark. And then, they basically, they do a low-end. They don't do anything mid-range. They didn't do all high-end high shit. Yeah. And uh, they're, all their barrels range from eight years all the way up to like 25, 26 years. Jesus. They got a 23-year wallet. It's $175 a pour. And it is fucking worth it. And you just, you sit there and you just, you quiet everything else out and you just sip and enjoy. And you're in this cool downstairs speakeasy feel. Sure. It's fucking phenomenal. And uh, yeah, that's that's the kind of shit that I'm trying to look for is, again, that experience. I want that fucking experience. So when somebody comes in, they're like, hey, how do you even offer a bird? <laughs> like, because a hundred's a lot. Like, you gotta right. have a mem- you gotta have a Rolodex in your oh, brain. Yes. This, 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 this. <laughs> And obviously you've had everything in here. Yes. So, like, what does that lo- what does that conversation look like when somebody's like, "Hey, um, you know, I want something super unique that nobody gets sure. to have." So it's a, it's really a start of. So what have you had? Because mm-hmm. I want to get I want to make make a recommendation. Oh, I've had that. Okay. Yeah. So what have you had? What do you like? Sure. And that's also that's about the best thing too for you. And I about doing what we do. When you do it over and over, yeah. When you, you get good at it, when you, you just fucking get good at it, you you get off right off the bat. So what do you like? Cool. I like Blanton's. So, perfect. So you have hey, have you had Blanton's Gold or straight from the barrel? Cool. Sure. I I had those. Cool. So do you like something a higher proof, lower proof? What's your flavor profile? Do you want do you want the burn? Yeah. Do you not want the burn? That's where then you start going down that rabbit hole. And you hit that right thing. Cool. So you don't want something super woody. You want something with a higher burn. Great. Let me recommend maybe William Weller Larue. Uh, yeah. That's gonna be almost a cherry bomb as you fucking. Oh drink. my god. Those are those are cool. Again, I dude, I'm only drinking this something that I can only if it was a certain age I could only marry them. Well, great, great. I have 18 year olds. I have 23s. I have I have a 25. Sure. I have a 30 year old. You know, you want to drink something something, something like that. Oh my um, God. Now Irish whiskey is getting huge. Sure. I'm gonna give you a little taste of that once we get towards the end. That's beginning to begin a new whole new frontier. Uh, the way they're finishing barrels, super rare stuff like that. So that's um, and then someone comes in, dude. I've only I've only had ever Maker's Mark. Great. So we're starting here at the bottom of the run. Sure. Let's graduate <laughs> you to right. I'm not gonna drop this on them because they're gonna sure. go, what the fuck is this? They'll uh, never be happy again. Right. It's too hard. <laughs> right. 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 You know. Dude, that or, is or, exactly or, what happened to me. Or maybe, where I'm like. I go out now and I'm like I'm like fuck. What would compete with like, with what you got? Like if, if I'm not gonna drink bourbon, like I almost it's I'm like afraid because I don't want to like ruin the memory of what I have here. Right. It's 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 tarnished me in a little way. It's, it's but it's like a measuring stick. Yeah. But it's like like, like cigars. I'm like okay. I kind of know what I like now. But like I've had a, I've had phenomenal soup. Like like I I'm never gonna be able to compete with this. I'm like well shit. What do I do now? Right. You know, I'm like, um... Well, what, uh, what's so, up? speaking of which, right, so we need, so we, we, we can't have you leave without having at least one more cigar. So what I also specialize in is what we call uh, certain regionals. So yeah. this is a Cuban regional. And again, the only way you can get it is you go down to Cuba. Uh, what they do is Habanos SA will release regional editions Oh my God. For certain regions, again, Spain, uh, the the UK, France, etc. Uh, they all have regional editions, and Habanos will do it uh, depending on the region, depending on how long it's been, etc. Uh, they'll do that once every now and again. Now this is a punch, and okay. you can see on the band, Exclusivo Cuba. This is only exclusive to Cuba, so the only way you can go oh and get God. it is if you go to fucking Cuba. So. Um, it just see, smells like Cuba. Yeah. I want to go. I just, that's all I know. It this smells, this like, smells Cuba. like Cuba. I want to go. Smells like Cuba. Yeah, that's the that's the only way that you're gonna get that shit. Um, all right, so let's put these away. Yeah, this is. Let's let's cut and light this because again, it's all about the experience, man. It's all about doing cool new shit. All right. Yeah, this this is. Yeah. This is incredible. I don't even know what I don't even know what it's gonna taste like yet, but like, just the smell. So you're gonna hold that. Oh, thank you very much. This, we will like this, and we will. I gotta get me one of those little bottles. Oh yeah, they're, 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 they're the best. They're, they're, they're way better than your, your manual yeah. cutters. Just one, one simple, one simple swipe of the draw. 
And then also, again, to the whole spirit, like, I don't give, hey, I cut your cigar, here you go, man, you fucking light it. No, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll teach you how to toast the cigar properly. Again, you want to get the toast. So the tell, what is a toast? So so basically what we're doing is is that as you look at the cigar itself, as we fucking light it, again, you're going to have all the dark uh, black edges around it, all the actual spots. So basically you're getting it lit enough that when you let it go, it stays toasted. We give a little blow so you can see you could still have that dark black spot sure. right there. So we gotta we got to continue toasting it. So really? as you smoke it, so it's super even. You get a super even burn the whole way through because nobody wants something that canoes or again. Oh, so that's how you paper. prevent canoeing. Yeah. Interesting. Learn something new. So as you blow on it, yeah. you'll see that it's lit the whole way through. So now I can hand that to you. All right. All that's right. all so toasted. This yeah, one? that's all, all right. you, man. So I'm gonna I'll toast mine. You. you go ahead. It's all you're already lit, so you can you can go ahead and start smoking that now. So punch, punch oh is God. known for almost more of a woody flavor as you smoke it. Off the draw, you get a little little nutmeg, a little toast, a little almond. Um, it's really nice. And as you get through the middle second, it stays consistent. So you still you get a little bit of cedar. Um, yeah. These aren't young either. These have been aged. They've been sitting in the box. When I look at the box, I think it was aged. Uh, I think they put it in production right around August 2018. So these guys have almost been sitting a year and a half. That's crazy. And you've owned them for a year and a half. Nuts. Or when you go down there, they've been sitting in the humidor. They've been sitting there for, for a year and a half. That's what's great about Cuba, too. Because uh, when you import from Switzerland, everything, because they have so much volume, everything's brand new. So when you get the box, you look at the bottom of the box, and when you see the bottom of the box, it's got a date stamp on it. Okay. So when I look at these... Right? So as part so when you look at the bottom of the box, these have been stamped June eighteen. So twenty eighteen. Oh my June. god. So these are almost two years yeah. aged, just chilling, ready for you to smoke. That's crazy. Yeah. Now you just throw this whole box in your humidor your humidor and you're good to go. Yeah, and it's let it, you let it sit. Yeah, so off the drawer, you're getting all that. Oh my god, the box that, is numbered. That's yes. insane. Yes, yeah, so they're they only make oh. ten thousand of those boxes. Oh my God! There's a whole seal and everything. Absolutely, this and, is uh, no joke. Yeah, and they're 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 delicious. They're really great regional cigars. Some of the regionals suck. Like uh, you know, so, I mean, some of them you wouldn't really search out. These these are fucking absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. Smooth, great smoke, great flavor. The yeah. draw the draw is phenomenal. Again, it's not plugged. Some uh, uh, a lot of the Cuban. When cigars. you say plug, what do you mean plug? Sure. So what happens is when Cuba, so Cuba, basically the temperature, the climate, the humidity, everything is there. Um, when they roll them, they, Cuban cigars are notoriously tight. Mm -hmm. So everyone references the actual Seinfeld episode where Kramer smoking cigar. Ah, oh, the the Cuban cigars they roll them too tight. They do. They pack a lot in these. Sure. They're meant to sit. What happens is is that when you get a true Cuban cigar, really, you should let it sit in the box outside of a humidor for about a day or so. They call it dry boxing because, again, the way that these are wrapped so tightly, if it's too humid, it will be plugged. Yeah. It will be, you'll get a hard draw. You'll be trying to, you know, you're trying to suck it out. Really? So with my humidor, I keep it a little bit less humidity than what Cuba is. Cuba generally ranges anywhere from 75 to 76% humidity. I keep my humidor roughly about 65 to 68% humidity. Sure. So that when you get these, they're never plugged. It's a great smooth smoke. You get a lot of smoke out of it. Oh, not, yeah. It's not it's a hard super, draw. Super, yeah. It's not a hard draw. It's like perfect. It's not too little where you're like, and it's not too much where you're fo you're forcing it. Right. It's, it's that of, beautiful great smoke. harmony. Almost. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, again, same thing. That's the shit that I would have never had access to. If I didn't go down there, if I didn't yeah. ask, go, hey, cool. So what's what's unique? What what can I get here that I can't get anywhere else? Well, great. We have these punch regionals that are only exclusive to Cuba. Mm. Yeah. So. And then this is what you get. You bring it back and bingo. That's great. How many cigars do you bring back when you when you go down there? Generally, anywhere between four to six hundred. Wow. In, in, in a spot because again I'm planning out for the month great so, so you're bringing one set of clothes and a whole I go bed. down there with usually four suitcases and about uh, a backpack and a carry on <laughs> so I'm the guy like I will help is you he struggle. traveling by himself like, uh, like I'm, I'm, 
I'm in JFK with like four suitcases. And they don't give you a hard time on the flight or anything? No, so they, as they change the regulations, uh-huh. um, you can bring back as many as you like, as long as they're for personal consumption. Yeah, I'm going to personally consume these. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but the thing is, you can't bring back more than 50. So the first ones we had, more than 50 per suitcase of the unbanded tobacco. Because the Cuban government doesn't get money from that. Because it's going directly to the roller. Oh. So if the Cuban government doesn't get money, they, they don't want, will, you, they don't can, want you to take it out. Yeah, you can't bring it back. So when wow. you go through Cuban customs, uh, if you have cigars in your suitcase, they will open them. And if they find more than two bundles of those And they cigars, really check. They, no, they check. Oh, I, wow. I get I get called religiously in Cuban customs. I'm just, I sit there at the airport and I wait for my name over the, over the intercom. I wait... I wait. Oh, this my name. Great. So <laughs> I write it down. Yeah, you I know, know the it, process. So you, so you go downstairs. They open up your suitcases. All the all the factory produced stuff, no problem. But they're looking for that unbanded Cuban tobacco. And if you have more than fifty in your bag, I've been in front of people where they open up their bag and they'll have six, seven of those, those bundles. They break them right in front of you, confiscated. Break them right in front of you. Oh my God, that's almost and cryworthy. It, it, it is cryworthy, and I try. As far as I don't just take them. No, it's just, again, it's literally they break them. They are they are not fucking around down there. They break them right in front of you. Oh my God. Because again, the cute, so you've the, seen it happen to people. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, I I'm in front of a, a now, German you, person. Did you even take off on the plane, or you're still waiting? No, to no, you're your still you're still waiting for the plane. So again, as you as you drop off your luggage and you go through customs, great. And then you get inside, and now you're sitting in the airport. Again, I'm. I know I'm getting called, so you just you just listen for your name. You wait for your name to be called. They call you over the intercom. You go downstairs. It's literally a small office in there. Uh, the Cuban, the airport, Jose Marte Airport, is incredibly tiny. So you, you go right downstairs, and uh, yeah, you got usually a couple of women working down there, and they they literally right in front of you, they tell you in Spanish. If your Spanish sucks, you don't know what the fuck's happening. Uh, so they open up your suitcase. Yeah. They check all your stuff. You gotta have all your receipts. And again, if you have more than two bundles in a suitcase, they'll fucking break. So you got two bundles per suitcase. Per suitcase. Ah. Uh. So usually I bring them back of that. I bring them anywhere from a hundred to one hundred and fifty. I have a lot of clients that look for that for that to, that tobacco specifically. Really. But hey, anything else? Yeah, anything else is good. Anything All right, cool. Good. I'll help you smuggle some back. Oh, hundred percent. And then uh, yeah, so yeah, we'll definitely definitely bring a bunch of those back. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, again, it, it's, it's Cuba. Cuba is so. Is it's it's a wonderful place in many regards, and then uh, other regards, it's it's rough. Like it doesn't matter if you're the guy that sh- that cleans the streets, right? That yep. clean that sweeps the streets, or if you're the brain surgeon that saving lives and doing, you make twenty five dollars a month. Yeah, that's absurd. That's it. That's what you get. So I mean, everyone is truly equal. Uh, there's there's no guns. They don't allow any guns. It's the safest place in the world. You could literally walk down the streets of old Havana in the roughest, in the quote unquote roughest places. It's the safest place in the world. Safest really? Place in, there's 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 no guns. There's no drugs. There's there's nothing. Well, there's no tolerance for any of that either. So that's the second part. If you were to hurt somebody or steal something, again, not yeah. only are you going to jail for life, again, your entire your entire family, mm-hmm. your entire family is going to suffer sanctions sure. as well. So, yeah, 100%. So there's no imp- and because you're the same as the next guy, sure. you're not you're not doing anything to anybody. There's very little yeah. crime. There's there's nothing. There's nothing Damn. whatsoever. Yeah. That's crazy. You could be yeah. a brain surgeon making 25 20 bucks a month. I heard and that's why again, I know so many people rally against socialism here. Yeah, it makes sense because again, there's little opportunity for them to make businesses. There's little opportunity for them to grow. There's so how do you? Nothing. So the people that own a business there, have they even make money? Or like again, because it's so poor, uh, and again because there's little money. Even if you have a business, you're not making money. You, you're you're maybe you're maybe making as much or as less as the guys cleaning the street. Oh my god! Yeah, and everything is super cheap. Like so again, if you we, when we go down there, man, you eat, you will have the craziest meal you ever had in your life. You will get a plate of lobster and shrimp. And rice and beans, and we'll have a beer. For we'll a, have a for rum. A couple bucks. Seven bucks. Get out. Seven dollars. Seven. And you tip them two bucks. It's like you like you like you made the world. Oh yeah. You, you made their fucking world. Yeah, they just made ten percent more. This you month. made their world. Oh my um, god. Yeah, that, that's. You could that's get crazy. somebody killed by giving them too much money. 
Well, it's, it's crazy too because so on the flip side, again, traveling around Cuba is a little tougher because no matter what, the gas there is so expensive. And the maintenance on these cars are so expensive. No matter where you travel, yeah, if you old, travel up the street, cars. yeah. Oh yeah, so right, they're the old vintage like 1950s, 1960s, like you know, classic cars. But you open up their hood, mm -hmm. it's none of the engines. Sure, like, they've basically Swapped, modified yeah. everything because everything as things break down, they don't they have the place of parts. Yeah, right. I mean, I opened, I you opened up, uh, you know, one guy was showing me he opened up his hood of his car, uh, a lot of the pipes and a lot of the hoses were breaking down, so they wrapped them in duct tape and aluminum. To try to keep them, you know, going. Yeah, yeah you know, it's crazy. But traveling is a little expensive, so it doesn't matter where you go. It's ten bucks every time if you go around the corner, or if you, you know, you go several miles down the road. You know, you, you tip those guys nice, but you, you can go to Cuba on the cheap. Really, um, it's, it's just getting cheap. there. It's just getting there. Yeah, and get, getting there. Uh, you got to buy a fifty dollar visa once you get into the airport to go. But that's it. That's, That's crazy. It. Now you said it was 300, 300 round trip or 300 yeah. trip? 300 round trip. Oh my God. 300 round trip. From JFK. From JFK. Jesus Christ. So you, you know, you get, you, you go down there. The airport, the airport's super funny because again, literally uh, Spanish time does exist. It is, it, it is a real thing. Oh, it's so you, you go down there. Sometimes you get your bags in 10 minutes. Sometimes your bags take two hours. Oh my God. All depends. And we, we, we laugh because uh, I'll, 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 I'll be with someone when I get there, who's been waiting, you know, almost an hour for the bags, and I get there, uh, I, I, I see, obviously, maybe they, they, you know, they're Canadian, or they maybe speak English, I'm like, how long have you been waiting for your bags? They're like, oh, I'm freaking out, it's been an hour. I'm like, oh, that's, that, that's, a, that's okay. Yeah. You, 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 you still have time. They're like, what do you mean you still have time? <laughs> and I was like, it could take two hours, because... They just go at their own pace. They go at their pace, and maybe they took a cigarette break. Literally, in the middle of it, I've I've seen on the airport, uh, they're you know they have the baggage carriers, they're driving them, and they they stopped. They've gotten outside, they're having a cigarette, hanging out, relaxing. Cuba time, there's no time consumption. There's no reason. Oh yeah. To to go 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 in Cuba, uh -huh. it's just what it is, what it is, and um, yeah. Yeah, when I was in, uh, it's funny. I was in Texas a couple months back. And, uh, dude, I ordered a beer and I waited, like, 20 minutes. Right, right, and that's normal. Yeah, and I'm like... Right, I'm like, right. for us New Yorkers, we're like, yo, where's the beer? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, 20 <laughs> minutes? Right. Just, as soon as you drop it, just start the next one already, because right. it's going to take another 20 minutes. I'm like, where are you, where are you bucket, please? I'll, I'll, be, I'll never get drunk uh, here. And, uh, dude, it's, it's crazy. People don't, you know, and, and it's, it's weird because like in New York, like that was the hardest thing. Cause I just went on a cruise. I took my first five days off in the last hey, five years. Hey, there you go, man. So, uh, you know, we're on the cruise and it was the first time I haven't worked in five years, like literally off, not working in five years. And what is that like? <laughs> bro, I was the most, that's why I went on a cruise. Cause I couldn't work. Because if I went on a resort, I would have tried to work. Also, the beautiful thing in Cuba, there's very little Wi-Fi, so too, so you're, you're also kind of disconnected, unplugged, which, is, yeah. which, is, which is nice. And uh, dude, it was it was like the weirdest thing. I'm like, oh my god, for once, I'm not like <laughs> going a thousand miles an hour. I know. It's still like you're like, oh dude, I could I could I could like turn like not turn off. There's no such thing, especially when you're on your own business. There's no such thing as no. turning off. No, you never. You but never, like, you never truly turn off. I'm like, okay, well, I can't work on my laptop, so I can't really do this. Right. It's not that I'm not gonna think about work because work is now ingrained in my DNA. Like my company is ingrained in my DNA. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's like okay, you know, let's just start playing around with ideas. You know, I got some, I got time to kill, and you know, there's only so much time you're gonna enjoy a hot tub, you know, and, and enjoy the sun, and you know, you're like, okay, let me work this out of my head, and you're like, oh, okay, that works. Okay, you know, I gotta make sure I put that back in the memory file because right. that'll that'll come up at a later date. But you know, it's it's just, it's cra it's literally the craziest thing. And adjusting to not having my phone in my because there's no point in having your phone in your pocket. It nope. doesn't do anything for you. No, nope. you know, no phone in my pocket, no wallet because you don't need money. You just get the little ship card, right? Right. And it's and I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, this is so strange. I literally have never <laughs> turned off like this ever. It's weird. And like great, great reset. It was it was nice to just really yank the cable out for a little while. You do you do need that every now and again. Yeah, and uh, it was just it was an it was it was an experience, and it was just like okay, like we're not going anywhere. The only shitty part about the whole cruise was the coronavirus. Like, right, that, like everybody had masks on until we got got off in the because right. we did five days, and once we got to Nassau, and the weather was kind of shitty the first couple days too, so it's not like we we're outside. Right, and um, once we got 
to NASA when we got off the ship, it was like, cool. Like, we don't have coronavirus on here. Because right. if we did, they would have never let us off. Oh, you know, so my like, good. Like, they let us off, and as soon as I stepped on it, like, that was the moment. It was like, relax. You know, because the first two days, I'm like, right. Was if there's the coronavirus on this thing, Where my company's are? tanking. There's no, it, there's, the Wi-Fi's a joke. Everybody's going to dial into the Wi-Fi the moment yep. we can't get off the ship. Yep. So, good luck getting a message out. Yep. You know, it's not like a commodity. At that point, it's a necessity. Everybody's got to get back to work. You know, right. if I'm stuck on that ship, I'm like, right. oh, my God. It's a giant metal box. Ah, so, right. there's no way. There's no <laughs> cell phone service. No. Who knows if we're even going to be close enough to land to get cell phone service. I'm like, wow, this is like, not that we're going to go to primitive times, but if you own a business on here, oh, my uh, God. People are expecting me to come back. Like, you know. Right. Of course. Yeah, I could go MIA, but like, okay, I'm a part timer. Like, he yeah. needs direction. He All needs right. to, you know, he's still not in there long enough that he can just be like, okay, I know, you know, I know it needs to be done. Right, still, right, right. you know, you're like, uh, yeah. this could be <laughs> really bad. So once we got off there, I was like, <sighs> right, it's that sigh, that sigh of relief. Oh my god, it felt so good. That was like, okay, this is fun now. This right. this got fun, you know, because that, that overbearing like. Not that there's anything you can do about it, but no. like, shit, I don't want to be stuck on a cruise ship. At no. least a resort, you know, they got power and stuff. Like, exactly. You know, not that I'm worried about the cruise ship running out of food, but it was just like. But still, I mean, to be to be legitimately stuck on there. To, like, yeah. No sir, like, oh man, that's days, like the worst, weeks. That worst you know, who knows? Like, I, I don't even know if those guys got off the ship. And, right, and I can't be stuck anywhere. I have to run a mobile fucking cigar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, right you know, look, if we're on, you know, you're on, you're on land. Okay, the right. Wi-Fi is going to be pretty decent on land. Right. You know, I don't even mind if I gotta go off on off peak hours, but like, you know, that was when that was when it was like, we we'll, we'll, like vacation mode. Right. Cool. Uh, we can, that's we can. Good. You have to have that. You need to unplug every now and again. It's it's really important. It really is. It really is. So where where'd you go besides? We did. Um, where the fuck did we go? We went to. We left out of Florida. It was like a ten day trip. Beautiful part about running a business on online. You can I can go. Oh. I'll do road trips anywhere. Yeah. As long as I don't climb meetings. Yeah. And. Um, so we went to Florida. We hung out in Florida for four and a half, five days. And then we went on the cruise out of Fort Lauderdale. That's sick. So stayed in the hostel for the first two days. That was pretty cool. Nice. Um, interesting. Never. I've stayed in a hostel back in the day, but not like this. This was like a more advanced hostel. Like you, yeah. you, it, it was kind of like a hotel without like nice rooms and service and... Common areas. You get yeah. a common area kitchen, common area living room. So if you want to sit down and eat, you go bump into people like on the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like your own room is totally private. You get a key for your own room and that's kind of stuff. So that was cool. And then we stayed with her uh, aunt and uncle down nice. in, uh, you know, beautiful little area of, of Fort Lauderdale. And then hopped on the cruise ship, went on the cruise, and then we had a day to kill in Fort Lauderdale, which... We were originally supposed to stay with a cousin, long story short, but, you know, we make you make the best of it. Sure, so, sure, sure, um, sure. it was funny, like, we get off the ship, I'm like, okay, my phone for, like, an hour. Bing, 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 mm-hmm. you know, 450 messages later yeah. and a thousand emails. Yeah. And, um, and then it was like, I'm like, okay, look, you could go down the strip, because we're on, uh, what was it, A1A, that covers the whole East Coast. Right. And, uh, in, in Hollywood Beach. And I'm like, I gotta just hammer through like two, three hours of work. I just gotta catch up, let everybody know that I'm alive, let everybody know that I'm not stuck on a cruise ship, the whole nine. And uh, hung out, worked for a couple hours, and then we, you know, it sucked because we had like luggage with us, so it wasn't like, you know, we wanted to go to the elbow room. Couldn't go right. to the elbow, you know, we, dude, we got suitcases with us, bags and stuff like that. I'm like, can't, we can't go to the elbow room. Like, I don't want somebody to walk away with our stuff. No. You know, uh, you know I don't even care about my clothes, but God forbid my backpack goes missing. Yeah, oh, somebody's gonna die. Right. And, uh, so, we didn't get the chance to go to the elbow room, but we walked the strip, and oh my god, the money, you know, oh. the money's insane. I don't think, I think the money's probably better here, but like, they can't drive their nice cars all year round. You nope. can't drive a Ferrari as a daily driver here. Nope. So, you know, down there, the roads are phenomenal. Uh, it's just all, Phen- sh- it's all, it's, it's all flat. It's, it's all, all flat. flat. They don't have, they don't have freezing. You know, freezing, you know, the refreeze doesn't cause any trouble, so... Yeah. That was that. It was a good time. Had a blast. Wouldn't change it for the world. Looking forward to... I don't know if I would do another cruise for a while. Definitely a trip on you know to a resort, and once, especially once this whole coronavirus thing comes down. Right, yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, you just see things like this. I, I know I know the media does get, you know, a little bit crazy, but it, 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 at the same time, you do have to take precautions, man. You don't... We, we, we don't know. Yeah. We, we don't, we don't know. We it's don't not know. like we're an employee, you know, okay, right. you know, all right, well, the, the company, the company's probably going to keep paying me or something like that, right. or, you know, I'll p- apply for disability, right. or whatever, whatever, 
whatever course of action you have, but like, you don't get that when you're the business owner, bro. That doesn't that that doesn't happen. Nope. It's shit talking. I mean, especially for for me, like, I mean, I'm already like thinking, like, man, if this thing gets overblown, like, they're talking about closing sports shit down. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, don't. I I need baseball to start, man. Baseball's big for me, like you know. Sure. Like, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shit, it shit like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, go in that direction. I don't think it will. I think it'll it's a, be a slow burn. We'll slowly figure it out. I think uh, I think hopefully it doesn't get you crazy. No, I don't. I don't think it will. It's, I, it's, I, don't, I, don't I think the media is doing a great job at blowing it way out of proportion. Oh yeah, and listen, and, 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 but rightly so. I get it. It's. It's something that we do want to take precautions over, but I don't think the way it's progressed so far that I've seen, it's not anything I think we need to get overly crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You know, my buddy's a nurse at a hospital. He goes, "Guys, it's really not that bad." Right, right, right. I don't. I, I, I do not think it's that bad. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. You know, it, it sucks that we don't know what happened in China, but of course, whatever. Right. It is what, what it is. It, it, it is what it is. We're I the mean, human race. We're gonna bounce back at some point or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, for modern medicine, right. right? Right. Uh, you know, uh, right. forever. Whoever hates it, capitalism will slightly disappointed. It's not turning people into zombies, but slightly. <laughs> slightly. I mean, because man, because it would be sick. It would be sick. It would be cool to live through that, man. Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> zombie apocalypse. Here we go. Ah, oh, man, that'd be, that'd, that'd be super cool. The uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> and you know, look, it is what it is. That's it is what it is. Uh, I saw a great Facebook post that it was like Ebola was twenty whatever, twenty right. sixteen, twenty seventeen, yeah. and then. Before that, and then SARS, and, and this, and this. Had, and had Joe Rogan's face on it, right? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna, gonna, we're uh, right. we're I don't gonna. even know, but it was like, you know, the world's going to end because of this, right, and the world's right, going to end right, because of right, this, and you're like, right, right. guy, no, it's not. We made it through Y2K. We're all right. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> good, bro. We've been there. We've been there. We made it through. You know, look, if the whole population gets wiped out, there's still going to be a man and wife, woman in the mountains that are just procreating, uh, making absolutely. little, you know. Absolutely. Mountain the men, mountain women. Yep, man. that's it. That's it. We're good. Mm. Yeah, good cigar, man. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Great, it's, it's a great cigar. Absolutely. That's the man. That, like, so again, it's the it's the same thing. It's about opening up minds and ask people, man, are Cuban cigars really that good? Yeah, they're really <laughs> that good. Yeah, like yeah, they are. Don't get me wrong. The Nicaraguan stuff, the Honduran stuff has caught up, but sure. it's it's not this. Sure, it's not this. It, <laughs> it's not the pinnacle. Right, right. You're not hitting the pinnacle. And like, don't get me wrong, like. Yes. It's good. There's good coffees. There's yes. great coffees. Yes. There's coffee made of cat shit, right? There's that right. fucking everybody knows about that one. But it's like, and and look, Cuban cigars. This might sound crazy. You're gonna have a heart attack. Cuban cigars might not be for everybody. Uh, you're you're hundred and that's cool, man. Exactly. Like you know, I have guys that come in, dude. How I smoke the flavored shit. Good on you, man. I got plenty of flavored shit here. <laughs> like, oh really? You got yeah. flavored shit here? Yeah, I got, got a candy vanilla. I got a chocolate espresso. You know, like, sure. And hey, again, it's about. It's about a what you like, and b if you're done with what you like, well, let me step you up to something different. Sure. Let, let, let's again step outside the comfort plenty zone. Plenty of shit for you to try. You know, I'm I'm tainted. I, you know, between these two and God knows where the, where the future is going to take the two of us. It's like, yeah, right. Uh, I don't even know what to ask for. My and, buddy, my buddy Long Island, he's got a Cuban cigar trailer. Like he brings out the best of the best. So what do you got? You know, can I, I I can we can go as light as you want. We can fucking. Go as heavy as you want. We can, we can, we can. What's the craziest yourself. thing you got in the trailer? Most expensive, hardest to get. <sighs> okay. Craziest so, story. Somebody got shot bringing it into the country. Yeah. Uh, so really what, really what, you, what we just smoked, right? The actual hand rolled is. Sure. Uh, so I have a, um, it's a Sir Winston H. Upman. So H. Upman is, uh, is a big, is a big Cuban cigar brand. They make a ton of, uh, diff- 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 different, different cigars. And they have the 52, they have the 54, they have the Connoisseur A and B. But every year, oh, here, pull it out. So every year, they uh, they make several of these cigars, and this is obviously they named it after Sir Winston Churchill. Sure. They named What's it up? after What's Sir. Up? Winston. How, How are we doing, you? bro? What's going on? Nothing much. Just, just some local visitors coming That's in. That's it. That's well, it. I'm not the first, right? That's all right. No, you're not the first. <laughs> You can leave that door open. That's too. all right. It's actually a videotape right Yeah, video. Yeah, we're doing a little, little podcast. That's okay. You can, leave the, you can leave the door open. You're good. Live right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're live on the podcast, having fun, little video action. Yo, it's stinky. Well, you know, yeah. listen, a couple cigars. That's that's, that's, a, that's cool. Thanks, I man. I appreciate like that. Idea. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of fun. A lot Which of fun. That probably is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a cool spot. Cool spot. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see in the parking lot. Oh, you can there leave you the go. door open. You can leave the door open. That's good. It's a fresh air in here. There you go. So, yeah, these are the Sir Winston H. Upman's. 
and okay. uh, they make they make a whole bunch of those uh, throughout the year. Oh they God. usually do about like five thousand boxes or so, oh and that's uh, that's probably well, some of the rarer cigars that I have. Uh, really, and those, these are these are these have the, the labels on them, so you can yeah you can you can bring it, but again you will you will not find those unless you know a guy who knows a guy and then get you a box. They usually do it. Once so you gotta know somebody August. in Cuba. To so you gotta this. you gotta know in August. Hey, I'm uh, I'm reaching out to one of my guys. Hey, do you have that? Can you get it for me? Great, I can get that box. I can go and get it. Oh my god, what's uh, a box they, like this one? Yeah, they're, so they're usually Enjoy anywhere from seven to eight hundred dollars a box. Oh Jesus box. Christ! Yeah, and so they run they run forty five dollars an actual cigar. I don't even know how to open um, this. I'm afraid. That's okay. Though. That's okay. Ready? Right what do you do with the empty boxes? Oh, I usually keep them. So I, 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 say, I usually I keep them. what I do is I make a I begin making like an actual like um what do they call those coffee table an, an, an actual ottoman so oh, ottoman really? coffee tables very yeah, cool. I will usually do do that with them. Um, so those are one of the rare cigars that I have, and then oh my God. another one. Uh, so for. These guys, uh, which I actually just got in Cuba when I went this past time. Uh, shout out to Alex again, because he's the fucking man. He hooks me up with the shit that's... So you go there and spend thousands of bucks and bring oh, back every so possible kid. So these, these are the Cohiba Edición Limitada. Those are the 2017s. Those are the talismans. They come 10 in a box. And uh, they they are seventy dollars a cigar. Is this open? Yeah. So you're just gonna literally slide it down. Uh, I, I'm, I'm That's just okay. terrified to break things. That's all right. Great habit of destroying. So you can see they come. Oh my with, god. They come with the beautiful label inside. They give it a whole fucking story. Oh my god. That. But uh, yeah, these these are ultra fucking rare. Oh they, my god. Yeah, these and these these guys are a little large. You can see how they do the pigtail top. Sure. Uh, and they are outrageous Jesus. cigars. It's super fucking limited. They rarely come out with these. Wow. And if they do, you gotta get same thing. You gotta know a guy who knows a guy who can put a box aside for you That's so insane. you can fucking pick it up. What does this the box go for? Uh so this is this is uh four hundred dollars for a box of ten. Oh my God. So if you were to uh, like extrapolate it to a box of fucking twenty five, they're about a thousand dollars for a box of twenty five. And yeah, they are seventy dollars a cigar. So Jesus those are Christ. same thing. Someone walks in who goes, "Dude, I do." And that's seventy dollars a cigar. That's not even retail. That's that, that's what I paid for them. So usually, again, I'm going to charge upwards anywhere from like eighty to ninety dollars a cigar. Oh, that's not. That's a you're, you're yeah, pretty modest on the fuck Really? Yeah, I'm not marking them up crazy because again, that's a that's a kind of store who comes in and goes, "Dude, you got I this." Smoke the, I smoke the regular production shit. What do you got that's limited edition? That's then, insane, man. In terms of bourbon scotch, like I said, uh, Pappy Van Winkle is usually two thousand dollars an actual bottle. The uh, the Kentucky Owl again will run you eight hundred a bottle. Blanton's is three hundred dollars a bottle for the Blanton's. Jesus Bowl. Christ! Thirty year old. If you scotch. can even find them, if you can even find them, again, yeah. that's, that's the hardest part. So scotch you can still find; it's pricey, but bourbon. The so bourbon world has gone do, fucking. Do out. you mess with the Japanese scotch? You, bourbon. You, you know what? I have not touched. The Japanese whiskeys, A, because same thing, they're really hard to find, and B, when you find them, uh-huh. you're going to pay upwards of four or five thousand dollars just for the entry level, mid level. So, like the 18 year, the 18 year Yamakaze, the 18 year, oh my god, the 18 year, uh, um, the Hibiki will start you at two, you're talking two grand. That's how crazy they got. And those are, those are like. Two three hundred dollar bottles when they first came out. Oh my god! Now they are out. Because they're so rare, so rare, so, so rare. good, outrageous, and uh, yeah, they you know they've become because they only can produce so many of them. Sure. Fucking possible to get. That's insane. It's and people paid all day long for it. Oh, uh, it's it's crazy how we used to think like you know Johnny Walker Blue. Oh, Johnny Walker Blue is the best thing in the fucking world. Now. Johnny, well, the price of Johnny Walker Blue has come down. Yeah. Because now it's just... Because there's so much competition out there. Yeah, and people and it's not know competition, about it. but people don't give a fuck about Johnny Walker Blue. They're not looking for that anymore. They're looking for the, the way higher end stuff. Way higher end stuff. That's absurd, yeah. dude. That's absurd. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard, man. And you have a bottle in the in the trailer. Absolutely. Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. Again, you know, now people get it. What's different? Again, I bring back Cuban rum. So we have the seven-year-old, we have the Selección de Maestros that we can bring in. We have the new uh, the new um, Havana Club Smokey that almost is scotch-like. Again, there's so much shit I can, I can curate for. You come in and you tell me what you like to drink, I can either give you, again, what you like to drink, or I can fucking wow you. 
and yeah. they can fucking knock your socks off. That's the differentiator right there. Yeah, out of fucking doubt. That's the differentiator. That's the craziest thing in the world. These bottles look sweet in the beginning. Yeah, right? so these are all the Game of Thrones scotches. So Game of oh. Thrones, <laughs> yeah, they, Game of Thrones came out with their uh, East Distillery in fucking in fucking Scotland. Came out with their own scotch for each Game of Thrones. So scotch. those are all different. Distilleries. All different. All oh, you have Kleinus, Cardu, you have Palisker, you have Oban, you have Lagavulin. They all came out with a scotch. Oh my and, uh, god! So all the seven different houses, they have the uh, they have the actual uh, black wall. Uh-huh. Where they can take, take. Oh, the so that's what the that knights the, the, the knights watch bottle. Sure. And then when they when the series finally ended, they came out with the king with the king bottle. That's oh a fifteen god. year Morlach. That's a really nice scotch. Uh, that's a very cool bottle, and uh, the scotch is fucking excellent. So, Excellent. do they sell this as a set, or you got to go out and get them? No, all they don't sell it as a set. They sell each bottle individually. So, they were very hard initially to get, uh, find each bottle. And then this one is in super fucking rare. This one is? That one, that to complete the quote-unquote set, that bottle is very hard and very rare to find. But again, for someone who's a Game of Thrones junkie and a Scotch junkie, you come in and you go, what the fuck, you have all those Game of Thrones bottles? And they'll yeah, just go right down the line. Yeah, they can go right down the line. You can, you can do flights of it. You want to do one. Or if you want to do sort of, you want to be the king of Westeros, we do a nine scotch flight where you can do literally each one. And oh you can go through the God. houses. And at the end, we take a picture take of you. A picture of this. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can be the sort of the quote unquote king of Westeros. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll take, we'll take a bottle, uh, a photo of you with the bottle at the end. That is sick. Dude. Yeah, a lot of fun, man. Like, like I said, that's that's the best part of this. Again, you're walking into a whiskey bar that's more than a fucking whiskey bar. Yeah, yeah. There's there's probably no whiskey bar on the planet. That's no, not yeah, no, period, period. That's that's, that's, the cra- that's the craziest part. You got period it in a trailer stuff. that's fifty plus years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and just sitting in here. Like, and again, there's just there's nowhere you could walk into today. Where we just did this, where you can have a Blanton's Gold, you can smoke a Punch Regional Cuba exclusive, and fucking have a good time. Yeah. There's nowhere in the fucking world. This is yeah. This you're is not, the most unique thing you could possibly. You're have. not. You're not doing it. That's absurd. This is absurd. This is the craziest thing. Absolutely the craziest thing. <laughs> and that's again. That's where I. That's that's ultimately like I've gotten to this point where now like people walk in and they they're, just, they're, they're not against. Like Blown away by this, but blown away by dude. I can't, I can't fucking believe I had Blanton's goal with a, with a, a fucking Cuban cigar. Oh yeah, impossible. It's impossible. Impo- you got to know somebody that knows somebody that has the, the sickest cellar, the best man cave there is, with all the money spent, the whole nine to have, to even enjoy this. There, it is, it is, it's tops. It's fucking tops, and that's why again, like. That's so, good. I'm starting my life out of 27. Right, right, right. Enjoying things that literally most people can't that, get their hands that, on. In that, you will, that you will not. That people will never see. <laughs> that people won't ever fucking see. And that's where, like, I always laugh at the end when we end of you know a party when we've done something. Yeah. Like, so how do you top this when you turn 50? By the way, because you know I, yeah, do, yeah. I do a 40th birthday party. Sure. So how do you top this when you turn 50? It's it's hard because there's not. There's not anything that fucking tops this. No, it's fucking no, it's not that's insane. It. Not anything that tops it. This is insane. This is the craziest thing. Now, do you have a whole cellar at home with everything with stock and all? Yeah, so it's <laughs> yeah. And how do you resist the urge? Like even last night, I have a. Uh, it's called uh, what is it called? The little book. Yes, yeah, little book right here. Oh, yeah. So I got bookers, and right next to it is little. Oh, book. there it is. Yeah, yeah it is. look at that. Oh my god. There so is. so John bought me a bottle of that for for Christmas. Sure. And. Uh, and that's been a phenomenal. So I actually dipped into it the other night. I'm like, you know what? Fuck, that shit was good. Let me just have, <laughs> let me have a little bit of that. Like, that's good in my eyes. Like, that's what right. I can get a hold of. Right. And uh, I'm like, oh, that shit was good. I was like, you know what? Working my balls off. Closing some good deals. There you go. I'll pour myself a little, a couple Dang. fingers worth. And uh, literally, like, I'll dip into it. And, I have, and do you drink tequila? I do. I have a tequila inside. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. And I, I don't share with anybody. I'm, I'm like, this is the, this is exclusively for people that really have a good palate Dang and it. like things and you exactly. can't get anywhere else other than uh, than Mexico Dang and it's cold manana and I'm more than happy to give you give you a drink of it and um dude nuts nuts it's the craziest thing and I'm like oh my god like, so this. I have a I have a special occasion rule I will only drink at home when I have completed a special occasion so whether it's you know I closed a big deal or you know whether I did you know something cool that day or sure. It's just very rare that I will go back home and and have a drink. So, but yeah, when I do, I have literally a whole wire rack because I have all my stock and 
you know, shit, because I try to, you know... Uh, you got fuck, a humidor at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking humidor it's at home. It's got to be enormous. Oh, dude, it's fucking it's massive. So now you know, I have a coffee table uh-huh. humidor. I have a couple of these. Sure. Where I store all, my, just store all the extra overflow and shit. And uh, yeah, man, again, like, you know, on occasion, when I've done something good, or et cetera, a little bit. that's... Pull myself a little. But yeah, I mean, I have... That, that, and that's the coolest part, too. Like, I have... A whole fucking variety to choose from. <laughs> like, you know, what, what, what do I want to do tonight? Like, so, you know. That was, oh, my that, God. That was I was going to say, that would be, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with, like, it's funny, my mom never came into my office, and finally she, she came in a couple weeks ago, and she, like, she's very strict, you know, she doesn't like people drinking at home, like, whatever it is, and uh, she comes in, my, comes in my office, and you, you, you haven't been in my office in a while, but right. you'll come in. Like I have a nice little like little mini bar right there. Sure. And like you know, it's it's either gifts from people or something like that. And right. I, you know, I got a couple international bottles and stuff like that. And I take great pride in my little my little selection. There but you go. She walks in, she's like, <laughs> "Whoa, what are you doing?" She's just blown away. She's like, "You have that much alcohol in here?" And now immediately she's like, "Oh, you're just working late because you're just drinking all the time." I'm like, "No, I'm not." Like I, I promise. I, I promise. like ninety nine point nine percent of the time I'm not even sipping alcohol. Like maybe I'll have a beer after dealing with a lot of sure. stuff one day. Exactly. But it's. So funny! I'm like, oh god! Now she, kn- now she knows! Now she knows, she knows what's in here. <laughs> oh, this is what you do all day? You just, you just sit here and just drink all day? And no, mom, I can't make money doing that. People are shocked. Like, you know, again, I, 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 I smoke all the time, but I very, I very rarely drink. Again, it, it's, you know, only really again, special case. But it's great when people show up at my house and we have events at the house. You know, birthday party. Or, sure, you know, sure. I, I have always a good spread, and I have to watch people like. Listen, you you know what you're drinking, right? Like, don't touch that if you don't know what you. Yeah, <laughs> please don't waste my money. Right, don't. If you're gonna enjoy it. Don't, please, it's there for you. Don't mix that with coke. Please. Yes, right. but I will punch you in the nose if right. you mix that with garbage. Right, right. Do not cut it with an ice cube. That is insulting no. the people that made it. That is insulting my labor to get that shit here. All right, please do Such not do a that. Snob. It's terrible. Oh, man. you know what though? You're entitled to it because That's right. because. There's 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 two levels of snobbery, right? There's the guy that has the small collection who he's outrageously proud of. Right. That like, oh, I, I had to wait a couple months for this to come into the liquor store. And then there's then there's guys like you who are like making connections in Europe to get them to fly you bottles that you could never find otherwise. And it's like, guy, you don't understand the labor that went into getting that shit here. If you know what you're drinking, great. And you understand what you're about to drink, great. But yeah, like Hey, can I mix this with Coke? No, you do not mix that with Coke. No. Hey, here's the Jack Daniels if you need to mix that. <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> really, Coke. yeah. You want to go, go crazy, you, you know. You want a mixer? Here you go. Yeah, here's Jack. You want to drink it straight and enjoy it? Great. Here yeah, you go. yeah. Hey, I mean, you're 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 a fucking bartender. You you know. Oh yeah. You have a, no, you do not mix that with Coke. No, Stop you it. don't. You'd be no. you'd be crazy. You'd, no. Not only oh shit, that's all right. Not, not only would you be a crazy person to to mix it with Coke, but it's like. Just the labor involved in making and dealing and the exclusivity and, like, the blood, sweat, and tears and the late-night phone calls. Cause, <laughs> you know, it's like... It is. It's a lot, man. It's a, it's a lot to hunt that shit down. Like that, And that's, that's also, like, the other side of the business, too. A lot of what I do is because I curate all this shit. Sure. So I'm doing a lot of shopping, doing a lot of connections, a lot of buying, yeah. a lot of, okay, I'm to call this guy now. It's not that I just show up one place... Get all my shit and I'm done. No, you can't. You can't buy it all in one place. Right. Nope. You can't buy it all in one place. Nope. 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 So that's uh, that's also the pain in the ass of it too. But it's again, it pays off when someone comes in. Oh, you got a, you got the fucking red breast fourteen year cast that's done in a fucking shirt. Oh my god. So that's that's where yeah. it's you know. And the whole story behind, like every single bottle in here has a story behind mm. it. Not just even like. The getting it in the country, getting it found, like the distilleries behind it. Yep. Like that's what you really appreciate, the whole labor process to right. make it happen. Right. Like so Little Book, for instance, right? A lot of people when they say Little Book, they you know, they think it's it's the bourbon itself. No, Little Book is a blend. Sure. So they take Bookers, they take Bakers, they take Knob Creek, and they take Basil Haydens. And it's a it's a blend. So a lot of people who drink Bookers, it's made by the same company. It's made by uh, by the same folks that make the same bourbon, but it's not it's not that that bourbon. It's a it's a blend, and so it's different. So a lot of people go, "Oh, I love Booker's, but I'm not a little book guy." Well, yeah. you, you don't understand why you're not a little book guy, right? Well, no, it's just I don't like it. Well, it's not a bourbon; it's a blend. Yeah. So now, so and that's where you get you give them that that knowledge, and um, that's also that's also fun too. Yeah, right. Knowing the distilleries, knowing the bottle, knowing. The tasting notes behind it, like people are always wow, like I'll pull it out and they're like, 
I'm like, oh man, you're gonna love this. It's, it's really big toffee hit at the end. They take it. Yeah, yeah, it's a really big toffee hit at the end. Yeah. So I didn't just buy it and right. not try it before I put it on here. That'd be right. that'd be suicide. Yeah, exactly. You know, not knowing what you're giving someone. Knowing your craft. Yeah. So so important. So important. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be truly. You know, and it goes back to the business thing, right? It, it's it's you know. God, that's fucking good, man. Oh my god. Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal. But it's it's that whole process, that whole had to do this to get this, right? You had to start out with you know thirty. Or then to get to 50, then to get to 100, then to have reserve in the back and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and it's it's that chase, right? You know, it's for, for, especially for me, it's not the end goal. It's not the millions of dollars. I could care less about the money. The money doesn't, it sounds crazy, but the money doesn't mean anything. I know I'll have more than financial success. Yep. But it's that journey that, like, oh, Great. wheel and deal and, you know, grow, going through that hustle, that's, like... That's the best thing in the right. world. Right. To, 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 to sit here and knock your socks off and have a good time with you and talk about what we're doing, what we're smoking, what we're enjoying. I think to me, like this is this is my favorite thing. Like, oh, this thanks, is man. this is this is my favorite thing. When you reach, you're not out working and, anymore. Right. You're just hanging out. Right. I mean, when we're like, oh man, we got to do another podcast. Fuck yeah, we got to do another podcast. Yeah. Just just so we can talk. The stars about have to align. Terms. Get us together and right. just have a good time. Right. Eggs. Eggs. Fucking exactly. Exactly. And, and, the, and the, like, look, it's the beauty of the podcast, right? You, it's not just us having this, right? Somebody right. is going to listen to this listen to this, and be like, hey, uh, where do I where do I get this bottle? You know, the, the, the Blanton's Gold Edition. How do I how do I find them? What, <laughs> what is that little horse? You know, what's the horse with the jockey on top? You know, put the story behind it, and then, you know, it sounds so crazy. And then they're like, oh, you know, because some people might not watch this, and other people might just listen to this, and, you right. know, vice versa. And it's a whole experience, you know, like that guy just came in. The 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 fact that he just came in and poked his head in, right? It, like right. Oh my god, it smells like smoking here. It's like you don't even understand right. what we, you just have walked into. You don't even know. Like you can't even imagine. But he's gonna go home. I'm like, dude, I saw this fucking crazy trailer. Oh my god, I can't tell you how many guys are probably driving by right now in the firehouse, and they're like, I'll see them later tonight or tomorrow or the next day, and they're gonna be like. What was in your parking lot, bro? Well, I had a guy with a firehouse. He does a, a kitchen. Firehouse so, kitchen? Yeah, right. firehouse kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Because, dude, I don't know what you're fucking doing, but he goes, I gotta, gotta talk to you. Yeah, good <laughs> guy. He's actually in this building. Yeah, bro, awesome. He literally he gave me that thing, and he's like, I, 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 I want to do whatever you're doing. So, it's again, it's shit like that, you know? Like, indirectly, who knows where, where that goes, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's, oh, my God. It's, yeah, he's on fire, that dude. Yeah? Great booty. Oh, my God. Yeah? He's, he's on next level stuff. Really? Next level stuff. Yeah, he's what got. What's he doing? He's got a um, Ray. If you're listening, I apologize if I'm exposing some of your secrets. Um, but so he's got the karate studio. He started out in FDNY. Got injured in FDNY. Has his karate studio. Outrageously, outrageously successful. Opened up a bunch of other studios. Sure. Got those bought out by other people, and wow. then and then I don't know the you know I don't know the the full backstory behind the whole thing. But now he, then he started then he started Firehouse Kitchen and the poor guy got ripped apart in the firehouse. He's like, oh, he started Firehouse Kitchen. It's a joke, 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 joke. Meanwhile, it's like actually taking off now. And like that's the coolest part. Like people, you know, they doubt you and then they see your success and they're like, oh, like, oh shit, maybe I missed the boat. Maybe I should have believed in him. Offered like a you know whatever it is. And then so it's that. And then it's like, then you get then it's you know oh dude I'm I'm working on a new brand Smoke Eater you know Smoke Eater wines and he's got a Pinotage coming from the south of Africa that's where the only Pinotage grapes are grown right and he's, you know and I was like I was like dude I was like that's awesome he's like dude I'd love to give you a bottle he goes I literally can't even keep it in stock and it's like people are begging for cases right ah, now and I'm like that's dope and like right rungs of success if you went back when he was in FDNY I was like dude what are you what are you gonna do later on in life you know. I'm gonna have a karate student. Like he would have never told you he was starting a no. wine brand. No. You know, I can give you ideas on what I want to do. Like I want to start a watch company, like with John. I want to get into. I want to get into uh, EDC, like everyday carry watches, uh, watches, gun, not guns, essentially, but knives, things like that, sure. rings, whatever it is, like right. manly ass shit. Right. Right. And then, okay, great. Well, that that might be the next rung. That might right. be a rung down the road. You know, who knows? I want to right. do. Uh, I'm not giving this idea out on on air, but. Um, Something down south that's not being done here, like, and something that you, you know, you and I may want to have a conversation about, but like, sure. all of these different things are like coming into play where it's, it's that, it's that step up on that rung, that rung, that rung, that more opportunity, more opportunity, more opportunity. And then you look back, and like, the craziest part is like, you look back and you're like, oh, I did all that. Like, you don't realize the shit that you're going through to get to where you go. 
And even if you do, you're like, oh, this fucking sucks. Right. You know, I don't want to do a free event. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do a website for, like, next to peanuts. But, like, I'm, I see the big picture of them. And, you know, hopefully they they hold their word and like, supporting what I'm going to do later on in life. Right. And then, you know, and then, it, and then everything just starts to fall into place. And it, it's just the wildest thing in the world. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. It's just, um, and then, again, on top of it, like, don't ever, like, when a new ladder shows up, don't be afraid of getting... Hop off the ladder you're on, and then get on that ladder. Yep, again, you yep. can start from the ground again, but again, we, you, you have those multiple ladders, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, again, you're, you're you're literally, you're just again with the yeah. wine, wine and cheese thing. Yep, I fucking know anything about yeah. wine. Jeff Bezos all of a sudden, never thought of AWS. Like wow. I just knew Jeff Bezos. Everybody knows Jeff Bezos, or like Steve Jobs. Right? Steve Jobs probably never would have even guessed he'd be in the cell phone industry and making the number one cell phone in the world. Oh, it's phenomenal. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm so <laughs> enjoying myself. It's very, it's very few opportunities I get to. Look, any, any, shit like that. And, anytime you need to come uh, out and you need an excuse to get away from home, let me know. I'm, I'm more than happy to accommodate. <laughs> you just, you just, you just don't get an opportunity to drink shit like that. No, no, I, I can't even. I mean, I, I it's, you got more self control than I do because I would just, all, not all day. But, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I'll have a finger today, and I'll have a finger tomorrow. Uh, and and then, oh, man, I drank that fucking $400 bottle. You know, you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true, man. It's fucking true. And it, so at the end of the day, like, this is this is why I love it so much. It's just, it's the zen moment. Like, everyone asks me, like, oh, dude, you probably do some wild parties. You probably have had some crazy shit happen. Honestly... Every time you step in here and people have a cigar and have a little drink, it's like, it's sometimes, like, we're, I'll be doing, like, this big tailgate. Like, people going bananas outside. There's music. And the people are in here just... Relaxing. Enjoying themselves. Having that quiet fucking moment. No and wife, no kids. Surrounded by the people that, probably surrounded by the people you love. Right? Just having that, that good cigar and having great conversation and it never... It never gets to a point where it's it's out of control. Like, oh man, like, dude, you guys, you ever bring in security? We'll never need fucking security. Yeah, well, yeah. because that's the that's the cigar lounge experience. That's just that. that yeah, exactly. you don't go to a cigar lounge and there's no, security it's a, sitting right, outside. Like, if oh, there's security sitting outside, you're right. the wrong. Right, we're, place. Going, we're going to get to, we're going to the fucking cigar lounge to get tuned up. Nope. Yeah, that's that's never that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Look, you might drink too much, but you're probably not gonna go try to kill somebody. Right, never. <laughs> you know, it's just that's that's literally the nature of the beast. Like, that's right. you're like, that's right. oh, dude, I'm hammered. Okay, I gotta call an Uber home. Right, you know, right, right. your your friends amongst right. you will say like, don't you get in a car tonight? Right, and that's a bit of a problem. Like when we're at someone's house doing an event, and you know, when the end of it, everyone walks into the house. That's that's the it. Part. Game everyone's, over. You're done. Everyone's safe. Everyone's happy. They're in the house. They're great. Yeah, yeah, you can't. It doesn't get better than that. No, it, no, it, it, it really fucking doesn't. It really doesn't. And it's you know, it's it's great for you too as as being the business owner. You're like, right. everybody's safe. Everyone's safe. Everybody had a great time. We're not driving anywhere. There's, you know, if something bad goes wrong, it's on it's, you. It's on them now. Like, it's on them. It's they're on in the you. house. You're right. Nothing bad happened in here. Yep. We're good. Yep. We're absolutely fucking good. Absolutely fucking good. So we're coming up. God, I can't even imagine. We're I don't know. The two hour and fifteen mark. Get the fuck I out of here. I swear to God, bro. Two hours and fifteen, two hours minutes? And 15 minutes. Get the fuck out of here. I know, dude. I know. We gotta wrap this thing up. <laughs> we just gotta wrap up the audio. We right. can fucking hang out here. Right. I'll be <laughs> Honey, I ain't coming home. I'm not coming home today. Nah, three hours later. God damn, we're we're still here fucking chatting. I love it. And that's and that's again, that's that's the time warp this is too. Like you can just sit here and you can enjoy. Have a cigar, you can watch the game, you can relax, it's just it's, 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 How many times do people come in? They're like, "It's over already." What? I gotta leave. I have people that got, again come in. They literally they bought physical, large, big tickets to the sure. game, to sure. the event, to the concert, to whatever it is, and they're like, <laughs> "Go to the event is worse we'll than me." In, we'll go in. <laughs> Maybe at the first half, or the first period, or the third inning. Let's just, like, ca- let's just catch the last do. five minutes. Like, I, it's 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 crazy how I hear all the time. Like, fuck! I wish I knew this was here. I wouldn't have bought tickets. <laughs> you know? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Right? Like, it's, fuck, look, I believe like, you, man. You bought I tickets. God damn. Like, I believe it. I believe it, dude. I could, I could, I mean, shit. I know. I know. It's well, thing, I, I mean, thank you for having me as always, man. Dude, this thanks is, for having uh, me. You fucking kidding? Dude, appreciate you being here, man. Of course, man. Appreciate like, you being here. Shout out 
to the Baron Media Group. Doing it big as always, man. You have, Thanks, man. Well, you have fucking websites, social media. Dude, you name uh, it. You name the, it. The, the, the whole Anything thing. digital, bro. If it's digital, fucking Harrison's got you. Come on now. Yep. Come yep. on. Fuck so, uh, so just plug yourself for a quick right, So, How do people find it? How do they buy your shit? Long Island Cuban Cigar and Bourbon Experience. If you look it up, it's the only one that exists in the world. Period. Stop. Again, everything. Fucking birthdays, weddings. You got divorced? I got you. We'll come to your house, man. We'll have a good time. We'll celebrate that shit. No big deal. You got your child's second birthday? No problem. We pull up. Again, all the dads have a good time. Engagements, concerts, tailgates. Yeah, below golf five, outings. you're hanging out with your bro Absolutely. still until the kid makes friends. Golf outings, we still, to this day, do not charge you for a golf outing. We'll show up for free. We sell. We have a good time at night. And then we cut you 25% of the profits at the end of the night. We do live auctions, silent auctions. Uh, again, parties, anything anything in between. Or if you're just looking to have a good time with the yeah. boys. And soon to be, you matter. call him up and you want the full party experience. We take care of it for you. Well, we're going to do the whole thing. Again, if you want to do double trailer events, you want to have a good time. Oh, my God. And you want your wife and their girlfriends or your girlfriend or a big party. Long Island Wine and Cheese Experience. We'll pull up with our Airstream. Same thing, blue carpet patio experience. All the wine you, you can You ever drink. do three trailers at one party? So I've done double trailers. So we'll have one cigar bourbon, one of the wine and cheese. We've done plenty of that. Um, who knows, man? Soon we can have not only the wine and cheese, cigar and bourbon. We can have our strong island fire truck foods come right to you as well. We can whip dude, some I food for it. you. That'll be a really good time as well. I love it, dude. Thanks for coming. Man, Thanks thank you, brother. Out. Hey, I appreciate it. This is appreciate it, man. <laughs> Nothing better than this. Dude, this is the craziest Amen. thing though. I still you think. You got it, man. <laughs> Another one in the books, brother. Oh, dude, you're not kidding. I'm curious enough if the camera's even still... Oh, the camera is still rolling. Let's go.